Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Critical Beauty. Tonight is going to be an amazing night because we are going to talk about Miss World. As you know, the 71st edition of Miss World is happening in India right now, and the finals are just two days, to get, uh, two days away. So we're going to be um, having an interesting discussion about the events, who our favorites are. And tonight, uh, we we have actually, let me see, four guests. We have Antonio Rivadinera, we have um, Ed Dominguez, and we have, for the first time, Julio Rodriguez, Pageant historian is joining us, and of course, and at the very last minute, guess who wants to join us? Uh, George of the Pageant Empress. So we're just waiting for them to enter the chat room. So I see Antonio. Let's admit him. Hello, everybody. Hello, Brian. Hey, dude. Hi, hi, Erica. How are you, darling? Hello, Rafa. Hello. I'm just right now with with um. Oh, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm just you. right now by phone with um with Julio. Um, yes, Julio teaching him. I mean, he's having a mistake, so I'm telling him to restart the Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So I, I told you, George of the Pageant Empress is joining us. So that's great. And then uh, I'm also excited, you know, for for Julio because I think this is the first time that Julio and I are interacting with each other actually face to face digitally so you're in mute unmute yourself antonio yeah i was talking to him so yeah actually you're right it's gonna be your first time talking to julio doing a yes. live with julio so exactly it's the don't... i think it's also the first time for george and julio to interact with each other i believe really okay yeah. i didn't know that let's wait for julito that he's facing for people who don't know julio it's like an encyclopedia <laughs> yes he is I think I think a lot of I think um to us you know older pageant fans I've been following Julio I guess for over 20 years now and he is so knowledgeable about Miss World um I think he's like the expert as far as the history of Miss World is concerned oh. because because he you know he has written so many articles about Miss World I think most most of the years and then if you haven't, if you guys have not had a chance to uh, take a look at his website, I think it's Julio Rodriguez Matute, M-A-T-U-T-E, -E, uh, blog, I think. And then you will see all the information that you wanted to know about Miss World for every year. And this guy is just so amazing. He's hardworking. And um, he's also... You know, from from I think he's, he's he's from Venezuela. He's from Venezuela. Yeah, he's from Venezuela. People don't know. You, do you know that Julio was the assistant of Osmel Sosa for years? In that from 1998, I think, to 2002, that he was assistant of Osmel Sosa. So oh, he yes. has a lot of insights. So he knows everything about Venezuelan beauty queens. He knows uh, everything about Osmel Sosa, the great uh, national director and training of Venezuelan beauty queens. So once he sh once he joins us, you know, feel free to ask him any questions whatsoever. Uh, write your comments or questions on, in the comment section below, and we will be uh, reading them to, uh, to to the world. So yeah, uh, Brian is watching. Hi, Brian. Hey, Brian. We're sure this grand United States pageant coming along. We can't. We we're so excited. I, I believe this is March fifteenth. Correct me if I'm wrong. The finals is March fifteenth. I believe. Yep, a week from now. And then let me see. Um, so uh, I just found out about the new format. Yes. Of Miss World. As you know, Miss World keeps changing its format like so every three or four hours. I mean, how how crazy is that? I mean, you can't, it's hard to find, you know. Yes. Who, who was, uh, was it a Vietnamese page that first published uh, this format, which consisted of the uh, announcing the top 40? The top twelve, and then the top beauty with a the top five beauty with a pur purpose, where each finalist talks about their projects. This is followed by the announcement of the continental queens from the Americas. How many continents are we talking about here? Four or five? Four, right? Four continents. Yeah. So they combine. So they combine Americas and the Caribbean. Yes. So America, Caribbean, Africa, Europe, and Asia and the Pacific. So that's four continental groups. And then followed by the top six interview, followed by the announcement of the winner and runners up. 
And not too long ago, Miss World posted the official final format, which consists of top 40, break down to top 12, breaking down to top eight, two per region. Yeah. Okay. And then from that to top four, top two, and then the winner. Yes. So I'm not sure if I like the last part. What do you think? Do you agree with like the top two only announcing the first one up and the winner? No, I think that that's something is kind of sad because one thing that I like about Miss World is a classic. You know, they have the same crown, the same sash. I just changed, you know, it's very classic, you know, the announcement of the third place, second place, and Miss World. I don't change. I'm just not a huge fan. I'm going to miss, you know, to know that. So I'm not like, I don't like it. Yeah. Didn't it happen? I think it happened before. Was it in 2018? 2018 with Vanessa from Mexico won. Yeah. Yeah. So they, the first, I think the, the first runner up was Thailand. Thailand. Yes. But, but we don't know who, who the second runner up was or the third or the fourth. You know, that yeah. really bothers me. I really, I really hate that. I me really, too. I really, really do. But I mean, okay. What do you guys think? Um, people who are watching, what do you think of the, of the stuff? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? You know, so please Hello. let us know. Okay. J Julio is trying to enter the room. Let's admit him. Yeah, he made it perfect. I'm so happy because I was helping him and then and he made it. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, people, if you if 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 you what do you think of the format? Let me know. Uh please um uh jot down your comments in the comment section. Um as well, we're waiting for mute just to let you know. I'm sorry, what? To Julio, he's on mute in case that he doesn't know. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Julio, how are you? Hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Finally. Finally. Yes. yes. Um, would you like to fix your camera? Because I see a lot of the ceiling. If you want to level. This? Yeah, because you're you're like looking down. You want an eye level. Yeah. If you can. Okay. Much better. That's much better. Much, much better. Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to welcome you to Critical Beauty. And I believe this is the first time we're actually interacting face to face. And I'm so excited because I've always wanted to meet you in person, but since that's not possible today, <laughs> you know, you know. And for me, for me, it is the first time I use this uh, Zoom application. <laughs> really? Oh, because you've been using uh, Instagram, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've never used Zoom before? Never. This oh, is my, my God. <laughs> That's why I was teaching him, but I'm so glad that you made it, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, all right. Well, the most important thing is that you are able to uh, access Zoom and that you're here and that, uh, you know, uh, you made it. Now, we're just waiting for uh, Ed Dominguez and also George of the Pageant Empress is joining us uh, at the very at the last minute. So I'm sure you know George has been following Miss World. He's based in Thailand, and uh, if you guys don't know who George is, uh, when you go to it's the Pageant Empress is the name of his Instagram account. He posts a lot of uh, different information from you know different pageants from all over the world, and uh, so we're looking forward to uh, meeting him again. Julio, to those people out there who are watching and who do not know you, would you like to uh, give us some brief information about yourself, who you are, where you came from, and how did you get interested in pageants? <laughs> okay, my name is Julio Rodriguez. I am Venezuelan. I am 57 years old, and I live now in Peru since nine years ago. Um, I started with this um, um, with this uh, with this love of pageants when I was eight years old back in 1975, and uh, I started watching them since nine years ago. Um, oh, so I you started have, you have some this, feedback. Uh, Hold on. Sorry, yeah, this Edwin's feedback. Yeah, with this. Yeah. Uh, with this love of 
friends. Do you have? I was eight or, years old. Or, 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 Edwin, can you can you mute you for one second? Yeah. Okay. Continue, Hul. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. Yes. So I, I started when I was eight years old watching pageants. My first pageant was Miss World in 1975. And since then, I was in love with pageants and I follow every year. Is Miss World, is Miss World your favorite pageant? Do you do you prefer Miss World to Miss Universe? <laughs> I love both. You do I love, love both. both. Yes. Okay. Julio, uh, I was telling them that you were the assistant of Osmel Sosa back in the 90s. Can you confirm that? And in the air, uh, yes, I started working with Usmel in 1998 until 2005 mm -hmm. in the Miss Venezuela office. Yes. Okay. Uh, how how is it like working with Osmel? How how was he as a person? Did he treat you very well? Well, he's a uh, a very difficult person to work with because <laughs> he's very strict and he is uh, he doesn't like to make friends <laughs> so <laughs> it was a very um a little difficult to work with him but it was okay because i learned a lot from mm -hmm. him and from yeah. the organization Be before we go there i want you to julio you can uh, rafa you will love this story Julio, you went to Trinidad and Tobago in 1999, right? Can you tell them this, what happened in Trinidad and Tobago with Smell Sosa and Miss Botswana? Ooh, yes. yes. It is so funny, yes. Um, back in 1999, well, Ed Dominguez was with me in Trinidad in that Miss Universe competition. What happened to Ed? Um, Yes. Well, uh, one day I was in the uh, in the hotel, in the official Miss Universe hotel, in the lobby, and uh, we were waiting for the contestants. And Miss Boswana um, approached to us to the lobby, and I, and I started talking to her, and uh, I remembered her that uh, she was in Miss World and everything so uh, after that the chaperone uh, asked, asked all the girls to go to the bus and Osmel approached me and told me why are you losing your time with this girl that she's not going to do anything in the competition <laughs> <laughs> oh that is funny uh, yes <laughs> And of course, we know what happened, right? Not that story, yeah. <laughs> and that was so. I guess when when Botswana won, did, did Osmel have a heart attack? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> All right. So, okay, that's something new that we've never learned. And now Julio is telling telling you what exactly what happened. So that's a first for Critical Beauty. Th that is an exclusive for Critical Beauty. So thank thank you, Julio, for. Uh, sharing that with us. So thanks for your kind invitation. Uh you're welcome. So people are watching us. Hello people. Hello Polymer. Hello uh Subhankar. The format does not okay we're gonna talk about the format of Miss World. Just hold on hold on to your comments and to your thoughts. So we're just waiting for other people to uh, to join in. Now George of the pageant Empress is trying to sign in. I don't know what happened to Edwin. Edwin we, we lost Edwin. Edwin are, are can you can you hear us Edwin? What happened to you? Is well, Edwin I'm here. Is Okay, <laughs> what are you doing? How is the pan? How is the Panamanian Revolution? <laughs> no, the thing is that I realized that last live I spent the whole two hours eating, so, oh, so I went to grab something. <laughs> yeah, so that wouldn't happen again. That's fine. So, were you, were you eating chips or something? You were eating chips, right? And you're still mm -hmm. eating chips right now. No, it was actually a white chocolate. White chocolate? Wow! My God. <laughs> must, be, must be very delicious. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, while waiting for George, let's, you know, let's talk a little about stuff not related to Miss World. Let's talk about what's happening in Miss Universe. Did you know, did you know in Miss Universe Italy, Hello. regionals? Hi, George. Morning. Good morning. Hello. We love your background. 
Thank you. Just celebrating all the Miss Worlds, all my yes, favorite Miss Worlds. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, I was just telling everybody that, you know, George decided to join us at the very last minute. Uh, we told, we told you, you know, we told you about your page and what you do and whatnot. So I'm so glad that you finally joined us because you and I have not corresponded with each other in a while. Like at least on WhatsApp, on our WhatsApp group. Okay. And you were gone for a while. So, yeah. but the most important thing is that you're back and look, we have Julio with us. Hello. You know. <laughs> Because uh, um, all five of us are actually part of a, of a WhatsApp group. And what we do is that, you know, we always share information and whatnot. We're also uh, judges for global beauties. So we basically, you know, every year when, when, there's, when there's a pageant uh, going on, uh, global, uh, we have the, the task of selecting our favorites. And then we give, we give points to all our favorites. And that's how we choose our favorites and we and, and Enrique publishes all the results, you know, on the global beauty so social media. So George is a judge, I am a judge, Enrique, um, and also Antonio, Julio, and, and of course, and all the others. And Lenka, by the way, you guys know Lenka, Bomasil. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but unfortunately, she won't be able to make it because she has she has a new job and uh, she doesn't want to lose her job <laughs> by joining us in this chat room. <laughs> so anyway. Before we talk about Miss World, I want to talk about Miss Universe because, as you know, uh, a Mexican woman she's forty years old. She's forty years old. Her name is Ariadna Muro. She won the regional contest of Veneto for Miss Universe Italy twenty twenty four. Okay, so isn't that fabulous? Congratulations, Ariadna! Bravo, bravo! So I went to her to her Instagram account. And I noticed all her posts are in Spanish. And I commented, listen, why are your posts all in Spanish? Are you, aren't you representing Italy? How come you're not posting in Italian? You know, so again, it brings you the question of identity. Are you Mexican or Italian? You know what I mean? I, I just don't understand. So if you were, if you were an Italian, would you feel comfortable that a 40 year old Mexican woman is representing Italy. What are your thoughts? I I would well, not like I don't know. Like I'm gonna give you what happened in Ecuador. Like the main favorite is uh, Mejia, the Mejia girl. She's gorgeous, but she doesn't, you know, she has never lived in Ecuador. So I don't know how she can connect with how she can wear the Ecuadorian sash when she hasn't never lived in Ecuador. So that's I'm against that. But if she wins, I will support her. But I would prefer a girl who actually, you know, uh, is uh, raised because it's not even boring. I prefer a girl who's actually raised in Ecuador. Maybe the girl were if a girl was born in Italy, in Venezuela, Colombia, but spends twenty years in Ecuador. Great, she can be a represented. But she needs to feel that she's from my home country. Exactly. Exactly. George, what do you think? I mean, I, I I don't really know much about this topic, but let's say he says she's not from Italy, but she's representing Italy, right? She was yeah, she was born and raised in Mexico, and then she moved to it to Italy. I mean, I think I think it's fine as long as she ingrains the culture, the local culture of Italy, and understands more about the history behind it, because Italy is it's one of the best countries in terms of you know their fashion, right? Milan Fashion Week and incredible things. So I think as she has understood the culture about the the country that she grew up with, I, I don't really have an issue because I have lived in so many countries as well. So and let's see if I want to represent the UK and I'm, I'm Asian, right? So people might just kind of say the same thing. So as long as she is okay, like learning about the host country, the, the place she grew up, completely okay. Okay, all right. Ed, what do you think? Miss Universe has proven that in order to do well, you should adapt to the American lifestyle. I mean, most girls who have won uh, in their countries who were half American or living in the US, they all place in the finals, all of them, including Panama. Mm -hmm. So I think that it depends on whether you were raised by your parents with the local culture. So for example, when you have Miss Dominican Republic, most of the winners, if not all, most of the winners are from the U.S. community, you know, in the U uh, uh, in New York or something. But the Dominicans, they keep their culture. So, of course, they have no problem representing this culture. 
In the case of Ariana, I guess uh, she competed in Nuestra Belleza México in 2003. She was a finalist there. Uh, I guess she got married, but she has been so many years in Italy. So, of course, I believe that she has the right. She's a resident. Uh, but I believe that you have a point when you say that she should uh, do the, her post in Italian. Because a lot of people might not care, but a lot of people might do. Remember when Danny Mendez won Miss Italy? Yes. She was Dominican, Dominican descent. And there was like this huge scandal. Right. She's one of my most favorite Miss Italy's ever. Uh, she plays in the top six in Miss Universe. But still, we have the question of, can she represent us? So, I mean, I, I think as, as far as you have the citizenship, you should be able to. Right. Well, I, I agree. But you know what? Denny spoke fluent Italian. She 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 spoke Italian during Miss Universe. And, uh, but I'm not so sure about Ariadna. I mean, Ariadna is beautiful. I think, you know, she, she's 40, but her body is amazing. She looks great. Uh, you know, she, she speaks very well. So I, I, I was just questioning why are you not posting stuff in Italian? That's all, that's all I'm asking, you know. Julio, do you agree? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to mention about Denny Mendez. It, it was the, the same the same happening that Ariadna Muto is, uh, is doing now, okay? But um, I feel that she, she can do it. Uh, maybe she has to learn a little bit Italian or a be or um, try to speak a better Italian so she can be a good representative. Yes, exactly. But, I, I think to me, it's, yeah. it's, it's really all about the language, really. You know, if you don't speak the language, the, the native language, yeah. then why are you representing a country that whose language you don't even speak? Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? If you don't speak the native language, you don't speak, you don't understand the mentality of, of, of the natives. Um, you know, like, for example, uh, yeah, like Denny Mendez. Denny Mendez, I think she and her family moved to to Italy when she was really young, but she was able to assimilate very quickly. When you compare, when you compare her with Ariadna, Ariadna moved to Italy like when she was in her thirties, and then she probably barely knew Italian. She picked up the language very, very, you know, very slowly. But I would, I would, I would, I would really appreciate if she could say something at least in Italian. Or, or I haven't even heard her say something in Italian. It's all in Spanish. Okay, so to me that that's a problem. Anyway, again, I'm just being a traditionalist here um uh, let's talk about um oh let me, let me just read some of the comments hello okay we have indian people watching Bhagirat. hi hi rafa i hail from india miss world is taking place in india i'm hoping to witness some exceptional performance this time yes we're going to talk about that later hi julio i am a big fan of miss venezuela <laughs> so yeah um hello rafa and friends hi jen Frank says, do you guys remember Bridget Jordan, runner-up to Vanessa Manillo, Miss Teen USA 1988? She is now a mother of four and competing for Miss Tennessee USA 2024 this year. Really? Okay. I'm trying to remember what she looks like. Is she blonde? I, I totally forget what she looks like. But that's great. But that's great. You know, uh, married women are, uh, you know, joining in Miss USA. But the question is, are they going to win? Now that we know about the scandal, the video scandal, you know, coming from uh, that conference in Mexico, you know, you guys, all the inclusion girls can compete in Miss USA and Miss Universe, but you know what? You're not going to win. We just want your money. <laughs> we just want your money, okay? <laughs> so good luck. Uh, all right. So, an, oh, okay. Um, I think, is it Miss Universe Peru? There is a plus size girl. George, you sent me the link. Yes, I think it's uh, Perry. Um, yes. I, I just saw it and I had to send it to you. I, yeah. yeah, I think uh, Julio would know something because Julio, you live in Peru. You live, have you heard about this uh, plus size woman who is competing in Miss Universe Peru? She's actually very beautiful. She's pretty. I saw, I saw today or I watched the video today. I didn't know that. Um, let's see what happened with her. But I think it will be the same story of Anne in Mexico. <laughs> she can compete, but she cannot win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Again, you know, it's, it's just it's just to grab attention, to to grab more, uh, yeah, viewership, I suppose. Um, 
Okay, Lenka wants to join us. Should we allow Lenka to join us? <laughs> she's saying, she's saying, you guys need a woman on the panel. Uh, how dare you misidentify my gender? <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> All right, so Lenka, I'm going to send you the uh, the link. Hold on, if I can, damn, if I can find it. One second. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So we'd be happy to uh, to receive you on the show. But let me just send you the link. So. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's what, what, what's, what I'm talking about. You have all these inclusion girls coming out of the closet, you know, trying to prove that they're worth something only to be told by Anne JKN that you're not really worth anything except for, for, for a reality show, you know, because the more inclusion girls there are in our reality show, the more people are going to watch, the more people, the, the more people watch our show, the more products we will sell to the to the public don't you agree people all right yes <laughs> so um now let's talk about miss grand thailand <laughs> oh yeah it just started like two days ago two three days yes. ago miss grand thailand just started and uh i think it was ed who sent me the link to this instagram video of one of the contestants you know the interest who arrived in an ambulance right yeah <laughs> I mean, talk oh. about talk about you know giving a show, and that to me is a show. Okay, so people out there who are uh, Miss Grand fans, you should know by now that Miss Grand, uh, they to them, showmanship and entertainment is so important. It's so big with Miss Grand. Okay, so um, there's a fun Miss fact Grand. about the the candidate who did that scene. Um, her province director is actually Miss Universe Thailand. Far side points you're drawing. So really? maybe she has something behind it, maybe. Oh, okay. Because she's a part of the Miss Grand Thailand team. Yeah. Asai. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're look we're look looking for I'm look I'm looking for I know you about uh, you guys, but I'm looking for I always look forward to Miss Grand. Miss Grand Thailand. And uh, before you guys, you know, joined in, we were talking about Brian, Brian's uh, Miss uh, Grand US Virgin Islands 2024 pageant, which will take place next weekend. So I think he has like 10 strong, uh, 10 strong candidates, 10 beautiful candidates. So we wish Brian all the best, you know, for his pageant. All right, let's move on to Miss World. Now, as you know, this is the second time that India is hosting Miss World. The first time it was held was way back in 1996. And of course, yeah. we have we have we have Julio, who is uh, the, the pageant historian. And he has written a lot about Miss World. So maybe you could add more information to benefit uh, the viewers who probably were not even born then, <laughs> back in 1996, who are too young to even remember 1996 and all the riots that have happened. Okay. So I thought that very interesting. So uh, India, was it Bangalore, Julio, Bangalore, hosted yes, Bangalore. Miss mm -hmm. World 1996? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that year, who won, Julio? Grace. Oh yes, I, Irene is clever. And she, how, I think she was eighteen years old. Yes, I, I guess so. Eighteen. Yeah, think, yeah, she was eighteen. And who was the first one or up? Um, Colombia. Colombia, right? Colombia. And yeah. I think India, India made the top five, I believe. Yes. Hunger, India made the top five. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. So if you guys haven't uh, seen Miss World 1996, go go to YouTube and watch it. Um, I've been watching a lot of like old Miss Miss World shows myself, like from the 1960s. And when I compare the shows from the 1960s and early 70s with with this generation's shows, my the difference it's so big, it's so amazing. The way that the, the girls were were judged in swimsuit, they had to turn like turn, turn. Turn, turn. Some of the girls did it, you know, refused to turn because they felt uh maybe humiliated. They didn't want to show their their butt to to, to the judges. So that's and that's why you have all these feminists start um who started protesting that tradition because they thought they compare Miss World to a cattle uh you know auction of some sort. So I thought, but now Miss World uh permanently got rid of the swimsuit. I think was it in 2014, Julio? Yeah, right. They got rid of the swimsuit competition in 2014. No more swimsuits, and they replaced it with a sports uh, and fitness challenge and whatnot. 
So I, I guess, you know, which is much better. Yeah, so a lot of things have changed in this world through the years. And what has not changed is that Julia Morley is, is, is still owns Miss World uh, since day one. Um, well, actually, Eric Morley started the whole thing, but Eric Morley died in 2000, November 2000. And then Julia took over, and that's when she started changing some of the um, elements of Miss World. So what do you think? Do you think she's doing a good job? I shows. love Julia. I think Madame Julia is one of the best the owners of the international pageant because she actually puts her heart and soul into the beauty pageant, which it's unfortunate that I have to say it. Some pageant owners, they don't really care about the beauty pageant except generating revenues and you know, profit for themselves. So I think she's doing an incredible job. And I think it was in, correct me if I'm wrong, 1973 or 1970s she started the beauty of the purpose after she started that i think she has done an incredible job like you know she's touched so many people's heart through the beauty of the purpose project and that's one thing i really like about miss world is that it's a celebration like a festival like they said right there are over 100 contestants and um there's no sash factor in miss world that's something i really like it's you you, you never know you may get a country that never wins miss universe miss grad or, or the international pageant winning miss world so that's something i, I really like it's a surprise because uh I think it was Gibraltar in 2009. Like I didn't even knew that was a country until she won the Miss World competition. So it's really exciting. And I think this gives more girls a chance to really shine, especially countries like in Africa, uh, yes. which don't really have the same limelight or spotlight in other international pageants, yes. which is really unfortunate. So I think Julia is a great leader. Um, and I, I don't want her to go. Please stay until like 200 years. <laughs> I think she should stay there. Well, she's she's in her 80s. She's like 82, 83 years old, I think. Yeah, I mean, she, she's getting there. But you know, what hasn't changed is her her face hasn't changed through the years because she still has this beautiful English English rose complexion yes. about her face. And she, she does, she's, she's a little slow right now. And she tends to uh, she tends to sort of like uh, slouch a bit because her posture, you know, is like it's poor now. Uh, but other than that, she's still very, um, she's still very mentally cognitive and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. So this year's co-hosts are going to be Megan Young, who was Miss World 2013. She was the first uh, representative from the Philippines to win Miss World, and I think Julia loves Megan Young because this is her like uh what fifth or sixth time hosting. I believe, yeah, she's hosted many, many times. She's doing a great job. Yeah, what it's other former Miss World title holders have hosted the show? I, I don't remember anybody Gina else. Who hosted Tullison. The show. Gina Tullison. What do you know? What year? Gina Tullison. She oh, yeah. was Miss World in nineteen ninety, and she, she hosted Miss World in nineteen ninety one, which took place in the United States, correct? Lala, yes. Yeah. Which, by the way, was one of the worst shows. <laughs> yeah, the worst, I think. Yeah. <laughs> One of the worst shows. Go see Miss World 1991 on YouTube. Oh my God, it's like the worst, the pits and stuff and everything. So that's, that's that's the reason why Julia stopped, I guess, you know, hoping for an American uh, for an American company to host, to televise Miss World because it, it was it was just so bad. The other co-host, by the way, is uh, Karen Johar. He is an Indian uh, filmmaker and television personality, and he does a lot of uh, um, Indian movies in Hindi, in Hindi language. He's very popular, and um, I've seen some of some of his chat uh, chat talk shows in the past. He's just very charismatic. Um, he's just very his is very amazing personality. So I can't wait to see him and Megan Young co-host the show i'm sure they I, i'm sure they will uh have a wonderful chemi uh, chemistry together so to to the indian fans who are watching the show what do you guys think of uh karen Jor? they actually call, uh, call him k joe like jennifer lopez j-lo he is k joe that's his uh that's his nickname yes so what do you guys think of k joe please uh let us know um just reading some of the comments. Okay, Lenka is is rushing. Uh, she's asking for twenty minutes, and she'll 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 join us. Brian Javier should join too. Says Erica. Well, Brian, if you want to join, you know, should we should we allow should we do you want 
Brian to join us? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah we'll but... Brian. Okay, so it's up to you, Brian. Um, somebody saying Peru. Peru is the winner. All right. Puerto Rico won in the in the USA. All right, that's good. Oh. All right, moving on. So, Miss World, I think eliminated the dances of the world segment. Is that yes? True? They did. That's what I've been told by the source inside the source. Yeah. I want to so, know why. Do we know? Do we know the reason why they eliminated the dances of the world? Apparently, because they have the Neha. If I'm not wrong, there is a three Indian artists, right? So uh, Shan is one who, who I believe is a famous uh, Indian uh, artist, and there are two mm -hmm. others who are sibling. So I think they are performing instead. So because of okay. that, uh, they had to remove the dances of the world, which is so sad because yeah. I always look yeah. forward to that. I it's miss really I miss great it's a celebration. It was of lack of time. Lack of time. Yeah. Lack of time. Well, too. Actually, actually, we were told before the girls arrived in India, we were told that Dances of the World was not taking place. It was not uh, mandatory. So you could take the music if you wanted, but they told us that the, the girls who were doing Dances of the World were going to perform in the talent show. I don't know if they did. But what they did is that some of them uh, recorded videos mm -hmm. for, for B-roll for the show. But we had been told in advance that uh, Dance of the World was not going to take place on stage this year. The same happened in 2016. They didn't have it in 2016. And in 2019, instead of picking a group of girls, what they did is that all of them presented their yeah. Dance of the World during the introduction. So I see that uh, a lot of people are complaining about the formats. Uh, I think that like, this continental thing doesn't work. It's been continental in this world since like forever. I don't know why they're complaining about it. And the other thing is that as directors, this is the first time we get an official format. I don't know where people were getting the other information that there was a top six and we never got that. All that we got is that this was fake. Do not listen to them. You will get it from us. We we, we got it from them about an hour before they posted it. So I don't know where they were getting the other information and now they're complaining that Miss World is changing the format on purpose. It's not... They always oh. had it planned like this. It's just that we didn't know. Oh, people don't know, Edwin. You, uh, for people who don't know, you are the national director from Panama, right? So, yeah. But I think what I, I think what's really annoying for me is that why why does Miss World like always wait till the very last minute to post the format? I think that that that, that to me, I mean. They should really advise all the national directors what the format is going to be like from day one. You know, no. Well, it actually, it actually happens with every pageant, Rafa. With every pageant, it happens like they don't know what is going to work within a certain year, and when the girls are rehearsing, is that when everybody finds out how it's going to roll. So, I mean, of course, it it would be a lot easier for us to know in advance the the selection system. But I think they are also waiting to see how it's going to work out when they're in the host country and everything. So I am unfamiliar about the the running order. I don't know how, how long is this show supposed to be. I think it's about three hours. Well, three I, hour. I hope so. I hope. I, yeah, I think, right. yeah, it should it should only last like three hours. That's it. Yeah. But no. what? My understanding is there's going to be a lot of singing, and that's something and, that I'm not a huge fan of this world. It's like every Indian year, like. a lot of singing. Well, didn't they do the same thing too when in 1996 there were a lot of um, singers and, and dancers on stage? It was very, it was very colorful. Yeah. It, it was very colorful. So, even speaking, elephants, yeah, even elephants on stage. What, what, Julio? Even elephants on stage in 1996. Were there elephants? I don't remember. Were they real? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. Mission, and then Miss Universe two thousand and five copied that, right? When it was held in Thailand, remember, they brought in an, an elephant, and was it Billy Billy Bush was riding on it on top of the elephant, or maybe maybe that was then during the preliminaries, not the finals. Anyway, I remember seeing an elephant too as well. But yeah. Now, speaking of the entertainers uh, mentioned, George mentioned that they're siblings by the name of Tony uh, Kakar or Kakar and Neha Kakar. So Tony is the older brother. He's an Indian singer. No, uh, you know, he does a lot of pop songs. 
And then he made his debut in Bollywood in 2012 as a music director. And his younger, his sister's name is Neha Kakar. So yeah, so I can't wait to, I don't, I don't know their music. So I need to uh, check YouTube and, you know, watch their, uh, their music videos and whatnot. Let's talk the about girls, the venue. Okay, the let's talk about the venue. The, the girls dancing that music all the, the whole day. <laughs> Oh yeah, well you know Indian people love love to dance. They always break out in in Bollywood dancing. Oh yeah, sort of thing, you know. And why why do you think Bollywood movies are so popular in India uh, and even around the world? You know, I mean, there isn't a day that goes by where we don't see like people literally flocking and crowding the movie houses in uh, all over all over the country because they Indian people love to be entertained. You know, they love to be entertained. Isn't that right, Indian people who are watching the show? Yep. Now let's talk about the venue. The venue is going to take place at Geo World Convention Center in Mumbai, India. Um, I heard, I've seen pictures uh, of the convention center, the the outside, the uh, architecture. I've seen um, the interior of the convention center. It's it's apparently it's beautiful. It's huge. It's big. So I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, to 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 see that as well during the, during the finals. Has anybody has anybody out been to Geo World Convention Center out there? People who are watching from India, let me know. Let me know what you think. There are videos of the stage uh, doing the rounds. I don't know if you saw it. The stage for the yeah. finals. There are videos already. Yeah. So the so you can see how it look. It's looking. Okay, I've seen. Um, I heard that you're not allowed to take. To record the rehearsals, I think that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. You cannot, that's yeah, what Miss Island, Miss India said. Like they unfortunately could not show any of the behind the scenes because they're supposed to be co confidential. I think. Yeah, every year Miss World's very strict with that. Like they they say the girls no videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you know, Rafa, unlike Miss Universe, like they give you a pass so you can go to rehearsals, and Miss e Miss World does not allow anybody to go there. Not even the directors. No one. So wow. they probably set up kind of a, like as a very short meeting for the press, probably like five minutes, but that's it. They don't like anybody being around at rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's understood. Even, even the format was a mystery until today. That's true. They they, they don't yeah. let the girls to to say anything to to their friends or family about the format. So mm -hmm. yeah, that is it so was, true. Yeah. Now speaking. Um, Speaking of social media, by the way, uh, I think a lot of people don't know that uh, a former Miss World America is one of the social media managers of Miss World. Um, her name is, well, I'm not going to mention her name because I, I don't like her, but uh, she is she is one of two. The other one is our good friend Enrique of Fontes of Global Beauties. So they are managing the social media accounts of Miss World. So and not only that, but our good friend, Melvin Nerona, you know, well-accomplished costume designer and, me and pageant mentor, also part of the Global Beauty's judging team. He is doing all of his recording, all the events and whatnot, and posting them uh, uh, at Global Beauty's uh, stories on Instagram. So if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to see all the stories that Melvin has posted, go to Global Beauty's Grand Slam Instagram account and see all the stories that he published there from different activities uh, for you know from this world. So Melvin, if you're watching, we love you. I think you're doing a great job. So yeah, we can't wait to we can't wait to hear to hear from him. Now, um, all right, let's move on. All right, let's talk about okay. We talk about the 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 old Miss World format, which happened to be fake. Okay. Um, Let's talk about the new format that George gave me, sent me. Yeah. And so the new you... format actually reminds me of the 2018 when Vanessa Ponce de Leon won from Mexico, the Miss World competition. It's very right. similar, actually, if you're looking at it. Because very... that, that year, they only had top two instead of, you know, top three. They only okay. had one runner-up, Thailand. So I think this year is quite similar, actually, if you, like, follow it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I saw, I saw some pictures or videos, I don't remember well, that the girls will uh, be on stage on stands, some stands like uh, like in 2000, 
and 18. Same yeah, thing. Like in the like like a G20. Oh, like you know, a G20. Like oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. They have yeah. flags. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we expect who is it? Endemol. Endemol is the name of the company that's producing the show, correct? Yeah. As you know, and Endemol is uh, is very huge. You know, they're a billion dollar company, entertainment company. They're the same company that produces Miss France. So that's why Miss France every year has a, has an amazing grand production, one of the best national pageants ever, probably the best uh, pageant, national pageant ever. So we 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 want you know we're probably expecting the same or more you know from Miss World this year. So they are saying that supposedly it's gonna be like best Miss World edition. So let's mm -hmm. wait and see. Yeah. yeah. Now, as far as the exact time goes, now the finals will I believe will start at seven thirty in the evening Mumbai time. So March 9th, seven thirty evening. So. From where I live, I live in the East Coast, you know, in, in Boston. I figured so it, that would be nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. That's, so that's because hard. because Mumbai is like 10 hours and a half. Yeah, India has a very weird uh, time zone. They have, instead of like full hour, they have this half hour cutoff. So I don't understand that. Mm. Indians, please explain to me, why do you have this weird, bizarre, like time zone? And... Actually, the entire country has just one time zone compared to the U.S. We have uh, six. Russia has like, what, 16? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> because it's so big, you know. Peru has one time zone, right? Yes. One it's from the east. Yeah. All the east yeah. coast. So Enrique, uh, no, uh, Julio, Ed, and I, we all have the same time zone, east yes. coast time zone. Until uh, until Sunday, until Sunday, because you're going to enter the springtime. So on Sunday, yes, correct. Oh, okay, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, Antonio lives in British Columbia, yeah, Vancouver, and six, he is like your three hours delay yeah. for me was six p.m. in the morning. Yeah, so you have to get up early in the morning, like at five thirty. Okay, yeah. just to watch it. And then George is lives in Thailand, and yes. George uh, is it like what almost eleven it's around like eight half? It's about an hour time difference between Thailand and India. So okay. yeah, I'll be being like after midnight for sure. If it's like three hours, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I think I think it's gonna be worth it anyway. So yeah. So we're all looking forward to uh, uh. All right. So, oh, okay. We have an Indian, uh, f uh fan watching Bagurath. Yeah, the north. East India has a bit of a difference. Okay, thank you for the correction, but I really appreciate it. All right, so they do have uh, different times as well. All right. Okay, let's move on. Now, shall we start with the top 40? Top three for each continent or top three for what? <laughs> well, we, we know the there are eight girls who already made the top 40 because they've won the challenges, correct? Yeah. So right. we all know that Botswana, Botswana, uh, England, Lebanon, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe, those are the five girls that uh that be the top five of the head-to-head -head challenge. Okay. So they automatically make the top 40. The other three girls who won their respective challenges, Martinique won the top model, Tunisia won talent, and Croatia won sports. So those are eight girls. So we need what thirty-two more girls to complete the top forty. Yes. All right. But four winners. Today, four winners from Video with a Purpose and the Multimedia. Yes. Yes. And Who today won? they announced them. But, they announced them. So Vietnam won what? Multimedia. Vietnam, multimedia. Won, yeah, yes. And what what is the other challenge? Beauty with a Purpose. Beauty they purpose. chose one per continent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so in other words, there are ten, right? Beauty with a Purpose finalist. Yeah. Right. So, so that makes nine plus nine ten. So that's nineteen. So we need what? Twenty. Only four. Only four of a Beauty with a Purpose. Four Beauty with a Purpose. Yeah. No, the ten. The four go to the finals. Yes. Only four. Okay. One for so this, this is this is this is what really this is what really irritates me about Miss World. It's just so confusing. Very very confusing. 
Anyway, so the Beauty with a Purpose finalists are Brazil, Botswana, Czech Republic, Indonesia, Nepal, Tanzania, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, Uganda, and Ukraine. Those are the 10 uh, BWAP finalists. So yes. they make it to the top, they automatically make it to the top 40. So any wild cards, any, any, any countries you think might have a chance of making the top 40? Any surprises at all? To be honest, it's too many people. I just focus on the top 12 from my eight more girls, like, because it's too difficult to choose top 40 for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too many. Too many, <laughs> right? Because, like, I, I just focus on the top 12, the strongest. So. You, okay, so you don't care about the others. I, I, right. cho I chose my top 40 already. All right, let's I'm start with Julio. Julio, who are your top 40, please? In reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> I shall read in reverse order. <laughs> well, in the 40th, Colombia, Croatia. No, no, no. Colombia is your number 40? Yes, 40. Oh, my God. Shocking. Really? She's one of my favorites. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. She was my favorite. One of my favorites, but I don't know what happened to her. Huh. She didn't. She didn't shine during the competition. She okay. was ignored in all the uh, fast tracks. Okay. So what? Colombia, Croatia because she won sports. Zimbabwe, Vietnam, um, Tunisia, Mexico, oh. Ukraine. Mexico. Yes, Australia, Ghana, Thailand, Puerto Rico. Belgium, Canada, Malaysia, Tanzania, France, Nigeria, Lebanon, Slovakia, Dominican Republic, Kenya, Martinique, Spain, Nepal, Ethiopia, Philippines, Northern Ireland, and Peru. They are the position from the 13 to the 40. Oh, Peru to 13. Okay, almost made it. Okay, interested. That's interesting. Yeah. So you don't have you don't have USA? I have USA in my top 12. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. All right. All right. Oh yeah, you're right. I think you told me. All right. Yeah. That's very interesting. That's a very interesting list. Do you think Okay, so you're very conf you're very confident that most of these countries on your on your list will make will make the top 8. At least. I hope, Let's... So, I hope so, but Julia always surprises. us. <laughs> yes. Let's do something, Rafa, because I think that we all, the three, all of us, I think that we both, we all did a list of the three for each continent. So maybe we can start for each continent, maybe the top three for us to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Lenka, Lenka is trying to enter the room. Should we admit her? <laughs> Let's decide. <laughs> Please do. I love Lenka. All right. Sure. We... We could we could use a biological female on the show. All right, let's admit her. Her opinion coming from a straight woman. All right. Message, messages, messages. Okay, people are saying Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, we love Trinidad and Tobago. We do. Puerto hey. Rico. Puerto Rico should go to Miss Universe. She's stunning. You know what? I first Puerto Rico is off my radar this year. I don't know why. She's not really catching my attention. Where do we go? But oh, if she will top forty, do you th is Will Nelia Merced attending Miss World? Because Miss Will Nelia yeah. was Miss will, World. Yeah. She Miss will Del India, yes. Because usually she has a say. Um, but Miss Puerto Rico made the the top ten in her to her challenge. So yeah, that's She's true. Well. That's true. So she she may um make a cut the top the top. Who knows. Who knows? Maybe she'll win the the, 20, the, the continental, continental queen or something, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So we all agree that the 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 nine girls who made the uh who from head to head and also who won the challenges are going to advance. Uh all right. So who wants to go next? George? I can go next. So we are doing from can I do from top 20 to 13 spots, similar to uh, Julia? Sure. All right. Sure. Okay, so uh, I have Venezuela in my 20th spot, uh, Martinique. I have uh, Colombia, Thailand, Brazil, Northern Ireland, Indonesia, oh. Nepal, and France. So that's I'm sorry, my... I'm sorry, after Northern Ireland, what did you say? 
Uh, let me say it again. Uh, so I have uh, Venezuela at the number 20, Martinique, Colombia, Thailand, Brazil, Northern Ireland, Indonesia, Nepal, and France. Finishing my uh, top 13. One, three. Yeah. Okay. That's not too bad. It's good. Yeah, Very I feel like good. Moscow will be in the, in the top. I like I'm it. Quite confident. Yeah. All right. Now let's hear. Oh, well, let's welcome Lenka. Beautiful Lenka. Yeah. Thank you. Good no, morning, Lenka. wherever you are. Welcome. Finally, I put on the weight. You see my cheeks? Yeah. How much how much Botox did you inject? <laughs> Nothing. Put really? on a lot of weight. I put on 15 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the hyaluronic acid is still coming, don't worry. Well, you look fabulous as usual. That's beautiful, great. beautiful, okay. beautiful. So, so glad. And I believe Lenka, this is the first time you're seeing Julio for the first time. Yeah. Face to face. True. Yeah. 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 Pleasure to meet you finally face to face. <laughs> and guess who's <laughs> back? Uh, George from the Pageant Empress is back. I know we're in After Thailand. So I don't long. see George at all. Yeah. yeah. Maybe because she lives in Thailand and I live in the north of Thailand. So it's like quite far. <laughs> Wait, know. how far? Wait, Lenka, where do you live? Oh. Well, I just moved back to Bangkok. Okay. Because my new job is uh, in Bangkok. Thank God. Because I cannot live in a countryside. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, George, you live in northern Thailand, right? Yeah, I live in Chiang Mai. It's okay. uh, about 12 hours drive from Bangkok. Chiang Mai <laughs> is absolutely amazing, I have to say. Okay. I've gone to Chiang Mai. I love it. It's really peaceful. Well, I've never been to Thailand. Hopefully, you know, rumor has it that Nawat is going to bring Miss Grand International to Bangkok in October. because you know, I would bet all of my money on it. The situation think, in Myanmar yeah. is getting worse as the day goes by. So, I mean, yeah. not only that, I was thinking about the past when you remember that he saved Miss Myanmar, right? He gave her the stage to talk about the situation happening in Myanmar, Myanmar about what this junta doing. Mm -hmm. And after he allowed her to do it, the junta in Myanmar actually issued an arrest warrant against her. So Kunnavat actually saved her, kept her in Thailand, gave her work permit and work and then help her to immigrate to Canada. So I kind of feel like for him to enter Myanmar with the Junta at the power right now, it's kind of dangerous anyways, because I, I'm sure they remember that. So, mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. So, you know, I think, well, you know, he's a businessman first and foremost, and he knows exactly what's best for his company. And, uh, and when I say best, it doesn't mean that he has to hire Kun An to work for him. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So basically he knows exactly what to do. And um, yeah. what is happening? Oh, well, anyway. So yeah, before you came in, Lenka, we were talking about Miss Grand Thailand. It started, it, it, it kicked off, you know, two days ago. And uh, we're watching all these grand entrances from all these different uh, contestants competing this year. So there's, you know, it's definitely yeah. people's attention and stuff. I'm I'm planning to go to the finale because I have Miss Grand, possible Miss Grand Czech Republic winner coming and then girl from England and girl from India. So I'm being like, I know the Czech one is coming. So I want to bring her for the finale. And but... are, you, are you are you training? All three girls, those three girls. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm starting now because it's I got a new job and obviously the whole Miss World is happening, so I don't want to be too distracted. So I said after Miss World, we're gonna start training. So I'm really excited for this year. Great girls. All right, cool. Well, I have been told that Lenka was driving the ambulance. <laughs> what? <laughs> you were. You were the girl. You were the girl who uh, arrived in an ambulance. <laughs> yeah. I would not do that. No. I am horrified with what's happening in the world right now. So any yeah. side of ambulance, I'm just no. I know. Yeah, it's 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 just too uh, dark to think about it. Uh, yeah. Actually, let's talk about. I want to talk about the head-to-head -head challenge because I think most of us have seen all the head-to-head -head challenges. 
Who do you think was the best? Botswana. For me, yeah. actually, ultimate. Yeah, a lot of people think so. I like Botswana too. I, I really liked, I like her too. But something about her face that is off-putting to me. Rafa, I mean, don't you think she reminds, like, I don't know for you, but like for me, she reminds me so much of Miss Universe 1999 from Botswana too, right? Pul and Pul Pul and Really? Yeah, the one from Botswana who won. There's something about her. It's very queenly, like a Disney princess. Yeah, almost. that I have to agree. I have to agree. And also when she speaks, it's very calm and really like collected. Very regal. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I absolutely love the way she speaks. And like I just want to keep listening to her. And the fact that uh, the national director from Botswana is interested to host the Miss World pageant in 2026. That's what I heard. There's a That's huge chance that she might even win or be in the top top two. There's That's a high possibility. Yeah. yeah, but do you remember? But you know what? Do you remember uh, Miss Botswana from 2010? Emma yes. was that girl. Gorgeous. That girl was stunning, and I think she should have won. She was robbed. She should have won. She was robbed of the crown. They yeah. gave the crown to bland Miss US. USC, Alexandra yeah. Mills, who did not even win a national title. She was just appointed as the oh, US. Yeah, I remember. Do you remember her? You know, she was just. So I remember playing. Alexandra Mills because I was in in California watching it, and I was like, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> but but guys, people forgot Alexandra was a favorite. Like she was second in Top Model, second in Beach Beauty, so she was actually a favorite to win the Miss World. She didn't deserve it. I think that Botswana deserved the crown, even though Venezuelans hates me because they think that it was Miss Venezuela. I think that Botswana should have won that year. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, but with a head-to-head -head challenge, I definitely I, I agree with George. Okay, Botswana probably was the best from 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 this challenge, and I would also pick Lebanon. Oh. I thought when I when I saw Lebanon's speech, she became so emotional. Uh, she she really spoke from the heart. You could really feel though she's speaking very sincerely, talking about the tragedies happening in her country and all that. And she's just so beautiful. I I, I couldn't stop looking at her face. And as you know, Lebanon has Lebanon ever made the, has, has Lebanon ever made the top three or top five in this world? Julio, do you know? I don't remember. Oh, never, never, never. Yeah. Right. Never. 20, 2015, Rafa, the oh, year yeah, of Miria yeah. La Laguna. Yeah, she only was in the she, top. She was like the, she was in the top five, and she was like the biggest favorite. Yes, I remember. She was gorgeous, and yeah, yeah and Spain won. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, she could have won, and another girl won the crown. You know, but with Yasmina this year, I think you know if she doesn't make the top four, I'd be devastated. But I think I really think that she deserves to be in the top four. Okay. But so the only thing the continent, right? Like continental groups. Yes. So I think yeah, she will have to get past India in order to make the top four. Uh, oh, and, exactly. uh, or Indonesia. Indonesia. Indonesia on mm -hmm. Nepal is very strong. Oh. Is strong. And Turkey. And oh my and, god, yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. Is Tur is Turkey classified as Europe or Asia? Asia. It's in Asia. Asia. It's, it's in Asia. Oh my god. A it's lot of Asian girls. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Asia girls are the best this year, I think. Yes. Yeah. So Botswana to me, Lebanon, and then followed by England. Did you guys see England's head to head? Yes. She talks about. Okay, I don't necessarily agree with her topic about climate change because I don't. I think climate change is is fake. Sorry, but the way she did, <laughs> look at Lenka's face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the way she delivered her 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 answer. The way she expressed herself, she sounded very, very believable. And also, she has a beautiful face and that red hair. Wow. You know, it's very rare to see uh, Miss World who's redhead, right? Who who was, the, who was the last redhead Miss World who won? I don't remember. I don't remember. Greece? Didn't Greece have red hair when, when uh, India hosted the pageant? Greece? I thought it was more like brown. Like brown, I Brownish, think. Like brown hair. Yeah. <laughs> but like Maybe real redhead, no. I haven't seen it. So... And Fun fact that uh, England has never won the Miss World pageant. Uh, back in 1983, um, I think it was Helen, I forgot that name. In 1983, uh, United Kingdom won the Miss World pageant. Yeah. So technically, it hasn't won. But they Miss split. World. They split into, into four I, different I, geographical divisions. Which 1999, is, basically. Which is not fair. We have England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. Like four so that's not fair. You know, it's just four. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not fair. And now and it's the same thing with Martinique. Martinique is part of France. Why is it competing as a separate country? 
Oh, you know, it's cool. Nice part of France. You know, like Guadeloupe, Réunion, and all these other you know uh, overseas French departments. They should be competing for, with you know within Miss France, not as separate entities. So it's not fair. Yeah, but you could say the same thing about Puerto Rico. Yes, correct. Puerto yeah, Rico but Puerto Rico, Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rico is a self-governing uh, autonomous territory. Whereas Martinique and you know, all the other ones, they're all dependent on France. They're actually part of France. There's there's a little political difference that I am not familiar with, but there's a difference, which is why they allow them to compete. When um, when the hat lady, Geneviève de Fontenay, was still alive, when she was the president of France, she did not allow anybody from Martinique or Guadeloupe to compete uh, in this world. Whoever was the first one or up in Miss France, she would send that girl to compete in Miss World because she thought Martinique is part of France, not a separate entity, not a separate country. Anyway, it's all, it's all political anyway. So, yeah. So uh, what do you guys think of Nigeria's head-to-head -head challenge? It was okay. Okay. Is it Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Who is the tallest? Is she one of the tallest African girls or was it South Sudan? Senegal. Senegal, Senegal. Is, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then Zimbabwe. I just wanted... Go ahead. I just wanted to say about England. Uh, that was her, right? That people said that she plagiarized her speech. Did what? anyone like prove it or disprove it? Oh, yeah. Somebody sent me a message say, uh, claiming that Miss England plagiarized her speech during the head-to-head -head challenge. And then also a link to BBC documentary, supposedly from where she uh, copied and pasted the speech. But you know what? I spent an hour analyzing her speech and comparing it with a BBC documentary. I did not no. see any proof or any evidence that she played yeah, your They're speech. just being haters. I'm pretty sure it's some girl who did not win the pageant. Yeah, really either that or they, yeah, they, yes. just wanted, they just wanted to discredit her. Uh, Correct. Completely, totally. On, yeah. So, but she deserves, I mean, yeah. Plus, I mean, even when we are writing like a final exam for the school, I mean, we're all like sourcing the information from somewhere, right? So nothing is like 100% original. And then let's face it also, how many girls have like writers writing their speeches and articles yeah. and like posts and everything. So yeah. nothing is really like 100% the girls. So Right, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so that's those are the head-to-head -head challenge. Now, let's can we talk about the top model? challenge okay all right as you can see i, I posted the top the top 20 top model finalists right here in this banner okay so uh, i i cannot agree with 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 the judges Martique, yeah. she was the yeah. best yeah kill it she she really killed the runway her her looks her uh her fashion sense the way she projected on stage her attitude to me that screams top model right there and then who was second closest to her uh, okay. Slo no, it's Slovakia. I actually like Slovakia. Oh, you like it? Okay. But, yeah, the blue Yeah. Okay. Turkey, Turkey yeah, went second. Yeah. Who? Turkey gets second. That's Turkey good. second. Turkey was second. I also like Turkey. But yeah. Slovakia yeah. was better, I think. Yes. What? Um, what about in this? Well, you know, I didn't care much with the sports category because I really didn't. I didn't. I didn't watch the challenge. Because I really don't care about sports, but we all, all we know is that Croatia won. Like big deal. Who cares? Now the talent. Um, I okay. I when I saw Indonesia's talent, she was playing the piano, and she was singing uh, this beautiful uh, inspirational song. It's called uh, "The Prayer of Saint Francis." When she did both, I mean, like, oh my god, how come she did not win the talent? And then I compare it to Tunisia, who was singing. Uh, that Adele song, what was that? What was she singing? I thought it was, it was just okay. Yeah, yeah, Firefall. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay. It wasn't like they love bad. singers in this world. They love singers. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, but what about somebody who plays who plays the piano and sings also? How many <laughs> girls can do that? Nobody can do that. But Indonesia killed it, right? You know, so yeah. But I, I, I thought Indonesia but, was Bob. But you know, give it to Tunisia. Who cares? She deserves it probably. I have to say, though, like, it's so hard to sometimes judge because we cannot really see everything and then we don't see the other countries perform. It goes for, age, I mean, head to head. It goes for, like, top model. It goes for talent. Like, how can we truly know who was the best when we are not even allowed to see it? You know I mean? It's, everything is subjective. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that's something that is disappointed that Julio was mentioning in the chat. 
that they didn't go live for the top model that everybody was looking for, but they yeah. did for the beauty yeah. for a, with a purpose in there. It's like yeah. Oh. Can can someone can someone please explain why they were not able to broadcast the top model show? You know, <laughs> compared to the other events. You see the cameras though. There was someone posted like the cameras in front of the stage, and they like made a jab and miss what like guys. You know, like. Don't be like bad to miss what you see how little equipment they had. And there were like 50 cameras in front of the stage. I was like, what's happening? Julio, you were going to say? I never understood that. Why uh, did that? Uh, did they do that? Because uh, Top Model is, uh, is something that every fan would love to, to watch. Exactly. So know what, what happened and why. And until now... We we could see the stories on Global Beauties, but we didn't see the official video yet. Yeah, they need to upload it. They haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what. Yeah, I mean, who's who's running? Who manages the the Miss World YouTube channel? I don't see a lot of updates. They should be uploading Enrique. Uh -huh. Isn't Enrique? Isn't this production. Enrique's job? <laughs> like, so, the purpose, you know, usually, usually they post it on YouTube channel, like all the introduction videos, which is the purpose of the contestant. Yeah, like, I, I, saw, I saw them. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. But not the actual, but not the latest events. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I would really would love to uh, to see all those on YouTube channel or even on Facebook, yeah. Any, anything, anything, but not on, not on Instagram. Everybody's using Instagram these days. You know, it's just annoying. The yeah. stories, like all how many stuff. times, how many times do you want to, do you want to see all the stories? I, I mean, you know, no offense to Melvin. We all love Melvin. I think he's doing a great job say all these stories, but there's so many that you can, that you can uh, see, that you can watch. Can you just compile all these stories and create one video out of these stories and put them on YouTube? You know, it would be better that way. Just my opinion. You could do a live stream on, on, on Instagram too from these challenges. You can do that too. Yeah, of course. A lot of possibilities, a lot of options. All right. So those are the head-to-head uh, -head challenge, top model, the talent, the sports. Anybody care about sports? Do you think Croatia deserved to win? Like, go, what was? Why did she win anyway? Was she like the fastest? Um, Rafa, this was not shown live, so we have no idea yeah. about the disciplines right. or how they chose the girl. I mean, I'm sure she is a sporty, but we didn't get to see why or how. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only the girls that are there. But they were divided into um, like four groups of different colors, like red team, blue team, they, yellow team, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. right. I think so. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean. I was told by Christy, right, that Croatia was really unbeatable, that she was like great in every single part of the challenge and she was extremely fast. So mm -hmm. from what I heard, she won like rightfully. But yeah, I would love to see. Yeah, sure. Too. But what are what are the, what are the, what her what are her chances of advancing to the top four? Croatia, honestly, really? Mm. Has there any has there any has there a Miss mm -hmm. World finalist who who was an athlete who has made it all the way to the top four? Or top five? No. Pe Peru, she no. was second in sports. Maria Julia Mantilla. Okay, what did she do? What's what? What kind of sports did she do? I don't. She was a swimmer. I don't remember, but she was second in in sports. I remember. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of, yeah. of, of Maria Julia Mantilla, she's in Peru. She arrived like a few days ago, and she she's been like reporting, I believe, to, uh, to the Peruvian uh, media, to the Peruvian press. Correct me if I'm wrong. Julio, is that what she's yes. doing right now? Right. In Latina TV. Yes, yes, and she looks fabulous. She looks beautiful. She hasn't she, she hasn't aged. She's like forty. She's forty years old. Forty years old, and she looks amazing. Her skin is like gorgeous oh, nice. stuff. Mm -hmm. So wow. Uh, all right. So moving on. All right. Beauty with a purpose. Can I just add something about the sports? I was just sure. looking at the statistics. Uh, Rolin from South Africa, who won Miss World. She was second runner up in sports also, as well. You're right. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, but she was also in top model. My thing is when you look at the winners of since two thousand like five, five. Everybody either made it to Beach Beauty, which doesn't exist anymore, or was in top, top model. model. The only one who didn't make top model was Stephanie Wait. from Rico. Who? Stephanie? Uh, two thousand six. Oh yeah. Stephanie Del Valle. Yep. From Puerto Rico. Yeah. She was talent. Uh top twenty one for talent. Yes. Yeah, that, that was a very interesting uh, graphics that you sent us, Lanka. Yeah, that's very very. Well, what about um, 
the outgoing title holder from Poland, Carolina. She was she only made the top model, top thirteen, top, top 13. model. That's it. Right. But there's something with her that that's why it knows me this year. Like when we watch with Julio, remember Julio last last edition, the head to head challenge, uh, head to head challenge. Miss mm -hmm. Poland was the top, the best three speakers. Like by far, like you knew that she would be in the top five because she was like amazing. Even though she plays in top model, only in top model, like she's so gorgeous and she speaks so well that you knew that she would be in top five. So that's why I'm sad that this year we couldn't see the head-to-head -head challenge because that gives us like who is going to actually have a high chance to win the crowd. Yeah, true. Somebody saying Carolina, Carolina Vidales. Who's Carolina? Carolina Vidales. She was top. Go, I think she was a Mexican girl. No, she was top six last year and won the sports fast track. Okay, that's uh -huh. good to know. That's good to know. Um, Indonesia's national director. Madame Liliana has arrived in India. She is the wife of a conglomerate in Indonesia. Love her so much. Is she going to judge? Because usually every year there's a judge from there's a judge from Indonesia. Uh, do we know who the rest of the judges are? Do we know yet? No. Another secret. Another mystery. Glamorous worlds. Do you think Julia Morley will judge? <laughs> Always. <laughs> It's like a given, right? What about her son, Stephen Douglas? Do you think he will judge? No, no. What about the what about the choreographer? What's his name? Donna Dixon, whatever her name is. She always sits in the panel, the judging panel. It's, it's always the staff, you know, the choreographer, the producer. The, all, they're always part of the judging panel every year. Again, it's nepotism. Family. Family get to judge. Usually two or three former Miss World uh, winners. Donna's like are, judging, no? Yeah, exactly. Who are like uh, very good friends with Julia and who probably have the same uh, share uh, offshore accounts in, in the Cayman Islands. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Beauty with a Purpose finalists. There are 10 of them. I saw, watch all 10 of them. Okay. To me, to me, the best Beauty with a Purpose project has to be. Turkey. Something about Turkey. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I, 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 okay, fine. My first criteria was beauty of face. Okay. Actually, I, I, again, I couldn't help but stare at Turkey's beautiful, model yeah. Vogue features. Okay. I did not care what her project was. Well, that's not true. I cared about her project. But the fact that she, again, like Lebanon, she spoke from the heart. Uh, and not only that, but as you know, I'm a big um, animal lover and an animal rights activist. Oh, she yes. is also an animal rights activist. Yes, she, yes. she uh, helps uh, stray dogs and cats. She rescues them. Anybody who rescues stray animals to me is a hero. Yeah. Okay. And I think for me, Miss Turkiye is the biggest hero in this pageant. Based on that. She's beautiful. Okay. She's articulate. She helped out with with the, with the earthquake that happened in her country, the all the devastation and whatnot. She she raised a lot of money. She worked with the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. Uh, she did all these wonderful things. So to me, she she has the best beauty with. Uh, Plus, beautiful. she didn't make it. She took it personally because she's an architect. So that's why I love the project. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. But okay. she didn't make it. I saw the list for. What do you the... mean she didn't make it? Oh, the. The, the fast track list of the top, okay, oh, so it. there was a list circulating between the girls because they were asked to go to the direction to film the you know, uh, the video for the finale, and then there were eight confirmed winners. There were four names from Biva from each continent, one, and then Vietnam, which ended up to be the multimedia challenge. And the four names were Uganda, for Asia Nepal, for Europe Ukraine, and for America Brazil. So I'm pretty sure those are the fast track bebop winners. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Oh really? Okay, interested. Uh, they were like rehearsal, or they were actually. Oh, actually, the girls know. The girls already know, but uh, there was kind of a little misinformation among them. But they are they already know who who won that. Oh, interested. Okay. Oh, okay. For sure. They were shooting yeah, we the video for the finale, you know, like, you know, when they announce the winner of the fast track, they usually kind of show the video about their project and stuff. So. I, I also like uh, Turkey's name, Nursina, say. 
nurse. Yes. Uh, nurse. Oh, nurse. What do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm a nurse. My name is Nurse. <laughs> I'm a nurse. <laughs> it's like a Disney pri the Disney princess who works in a hospital. Yeah. 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 And I'm I'm yeah. sure our good friend Nick, who is who is from Turkey, and hopefully he's watching the show. You know, he he'll be delighted that I mentioned uh, Turkey as one of my favorites. So who wants to go next? Who anybody wants to comment on who their favorite Beauty with a Purpose uh, project is? Antonio. Ed, um, oh, Ed go ahead, Ed. Uh, I have to to go with Nepal. Um. Yeah. First, she broke the rules because you're supposed to send a video that is maximum six minutes long, and she sent a whole Netflix series complete with like seven episodes. Who? who? But, Nepal. 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 Okay. But the project, how she presented it, uh, it was uh, groundbreaking. The way she showed how these people living in the mountains behave when they get running water or electricity. Um I was like, really, Nepal is, Nepal is always bringing it when it comes to Beauty with a Purpose. And she was an amazing, uh, the project was amazing. The video was amazing. So for me, even though I watched most of them, I didn't get to watch all of them because not all of them were available. They didn't make them all of all of them available in the YouTube. Um, I think it for me was the best. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I think that uh, not only by, by sending a 16-minute video, because next year I'm sending a one-hour video, I guess, mm -hmm. but how she presented everything. Like, the project yeah. had life. The project had a purpose. The project had a beginning and end, yes. uh, which, is, which is what we are asked to present all the time. Like, Julia wants to see that your project is not just a project. She wants to see that you ended it, that you achieved it, that you uh, mm -hmm. got the money, yeah. that you helped these people. Yeah. Because most yeah. girls, you know, once they the pageant is over, they just forget about it. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's my favorite. That's why I, I love Julia. Thank you. She cares. She really looks looking for you know like results. Like she's who? Yeah. Julia. Oh, Julia. I, I have a comment. I have a comment. I don't know if Lenka can help me with this. Um, there was a, a little bit of criticism because <laughs> I think Czech Republic, Czech Republic was a finalist in Beauty with a Purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some people yeah. were asking me if it's allowed for the contestants to do charity work outside of their countries, because one of the rules is that you have to do it in your country. But so she I'm... had her country in it, because she has two projects. So she started yeah. to do the charity work in Tanzania, because that's where she worked before she connected with the community. And hold on, my friend is in the video. <laughs> no, no worries. But, uh, you know, because of that, she decided that she wanted to start her own foundation focusing on the kids and not only kids, but elderly people and disabled people in Czech Republic. So I know there was some issue that the charity work should be in your country, but that's why she included both of the projects in a video. And as you mentioned about Nepal, that you like the connection to the people and so on. I agree with that because actually when uh, we were talking about... Um, about um you know like uh, how to make the video i know christy has been doing it for a long time i said from day one like we need to find a family that we want to focus on we want to say the story of the family because every time i look at charity like projects it feels like so like like not connecting to the heart it's kind of like okay you're doing the work but like do i know that you're really connected to the case or you know you're just doing it for the video to look good at the miss world uh, competition but when you say the story of a certain human or certain family and people can really connect to the story, it really catches the heart. I mean, it doesn't only work for Miss World. It works for like raising money for charity because well, I'm raising money for charity. And it's always definitely better showing the family. So I also connect to Nepal and I connect. I mean, Christy, I mean, I'm biased a little bit. <laughs> That's yeah. good to know. Just reading some of the reading some of the comments. As per the new format, Beauty with a Purpose winners will only enter top forty. So the winning Beauty with a Purpose will have no influence in entering top twelve and top eight. Is that true? There are uh, four winners, not one. Yeah, the four winners. Yeah, but four actually, winners. All, yeah. but always Beauty with a Purpose is very heavy. Like they will place high. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. 
Uh, they just posted about the new format formally. Yep, we know that. Uh, we I saw it like an hour before. They deleted the it. Yeah. They deleted it. No. no they they deleted it. I wanted yes. to comment on it. It was. They're gonna hours. replace it again. They replace it. Yeah, they replace it. There's a new twist. Julia, Julia Morley will be blindfolded, and she, <laughs> she will pick the top four, while based on the smoothness of the girls' faces. <laughs> yeah. That's what I put. I'm just kidding. Anyway. Uh, we have to say before. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious. <laughs> that's right. Oh, stubble. Oh, that's stubble. I'm the really host. curious about the questions, though, because <laughs> Christy said that they were told it's going to be like the Dragon series, that it's going to be sharp questions. So is it going to be like you shoot that and it's like, Three seconds for answer. Who is your favorite person? What is your favorite food? What is it? I don't oh. know, but I'm really curious because I'm terrified after last edition when it comes to Q and A. Yes, I'm sure Botswana will kill the interviews. That's for sure. A lot of the current. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, somebody saying the host needs to know. One hundred and three, oh. lady. What? Or is he trying to create a drama? What are you talking about? Are you talking about me, the host? <laughs> Uh, Nepal always have the best mm -hmm. DWAP. Yeah, we all agree Nepal always yeah. has the worst. And yeah. uh, oh, okay. Shyam Gurung says there are two videos of Nepal. One is the longer version, which her own team okay. posted in their own account, not the Miss World account. And the other one is six Please, minutes long, long and they no, submitted to Miss World, but it was not no, posted. So, thank you. Yeah, normally, normally they're all posted in the Miss World channel, but this year the girls were asked to post everything themselves on the website, and a lot of them could not even get it to work. Yeah, and some of the videos were not even working; the links were not working. So, so there are a lot of videos that we didn't see. They did get inside the organization; they did get all videos. They saw all the videos, but as the audience were not able to see all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then again, it's the job of the girls. Uh, they have their own profile on the Miss World website, and part of like of their competition is to be posting articles and posting their videos and everything on the site. So if there is a failure, it's on the girls. Exactly. A little bit fifty and fifty because there were technical difficulties with the site as well. So you know, yeah. like you could upload your video, and then suddenly. It will post a photo and there was no link anywhere. I got comments about that. People who were trying to access some projects like it's not working, it's not working, and the girls didn't know what to do. Has because the interface, checked... yeah, has... the interface is not friendly. Has anybody checked the Miss World official website? Or just... Do people do people still go to the website? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was telling them that I don't know. And I used to be a website designer for almost two decades. And I don't know anybody who in 2024 is going to go to a .com to look for information. Everybody's using an app or, yeah. or social media. But uh, you don't yeah. go to a .com. Okay. Now, but... I, I'm looking at the official website, and it, it, it has been updated with all the contestants and whatnot, all the information for the, for the finals and the event. So that's good. That's good. But uh, like for a long time, they were not updating the website. So... Plus, you know, the girls can actually link their new articles in the stories because you know when you post a story on instagram you can always be like okay guys i have a new article up here here's the link click and so on so they can actually transfer the traffic to the websites part of their job too mm -hmm. now uh julia who is your favorite beauty with a purpose project uh well of course nepal in second place indonesia and third uh, turkey Okay, good. Good choices. What about you, George? I feel like it's very similar, especially because Nepal, it's quite personal, right? She actually told a story and I, I love that because I have a background in media studies. So uh, visually, it was also stunning. So it was like, really quite nice to see. It felt like I was watching a documentary about the project. And I think that's something that's important. And hopefully for next year, we'll see much more contestants also showcase the project as well, like the, the, the process, the journey of the due to the purpose, because I feel sometimes contestants only talk about the planning stage of what is the project, 
but they lack in the fi- finalizing the project and also do in you know, showing the journey of what it takes to get there because i think she said during the the garden dinner that it took her almost two years for this project to uh, finalize and right. from the planning stage to the materializing everything in the end and i think it shows that she has not just done this like lenka said only for the show it's something that she's going to continue after the pageant too and i think that's something a lot of the mm-hmm. contestants should realize that you know it's not only for the show it's, uh, it's something that you really need to mean for you from the heart so i think she did the fact and also turkey is my second she's like my my favorite <laughs> good antonio who's your actually... favorite oh my favorite's indonesia because they she actually helps a lot of people i like that she gave numbers uh, of course nepal is amazing and turkey because she took it in a personal level architect you know i'm yeah. building and when she said that she helps dogs oh i was like you know like crown her please <laughs> now is indonesia is she the one who also wrote a book mm-hmm. yes okay. She totally right. okay yeah all right yeah i like her too. you I, know like, she might be my second yeah you know i have to say though you're gonna all hate me i love turkey and she is one of my top two right but when i look at her bvap the problem I look at the video is, have you noticed the whole video when they are building that she is all in the same clothes, same hair or anything that it was shot in one day, which makes me kind of feel like, is she really putting on the work or is this video done just for the Viva project? And her hair is down. You're doing construction. Why is her hair down? I don't know. I'm such a little, like, I always pick little things. I love her to death, but I love her project. I don't like the presentation. Okay. All right. Fair, 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 fair enough. All right, let's move on. Okay, so people want to know. I think we're we're gonna go jump into the to our favorites for the uh, what top let's, top twelve, top twelve. Okay, let's we just start with it. How do you want to say it? by continent or? Um. Uh, okay. What do you, What do you prefer? You take the lead, Antonio. What do you want? I don't know. Maybe we can each of us mention for we can talk per continent each of us. So we'll see. If we if all we right. Have... So let's go for. Let's start with the app with Africa. Who do you think are the best in Africa? Botswana. Okay. Yeah. Botswana. Oh, you want me... <laughs> Who, okay. what? I think we all agree Botswana. Botswana. <laughs> yeah. No. Botswana. For me, Botswana top, and South Africa. My top three from Africa is Botswana, South Africa, and Nigeria. Okay. All my right. top three, my top three from from Africa, Botswana, South Africa, and Uganda. Okay, good, 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 good. Lenka. From Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, South Africa. Okay. Because Nigeria was in top model and she was in head to head two winner. Yeah. All right. So I have Botswana, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe as my top three from Africa. Okay, I have Botswana, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. Almost there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Botswana, Ed, South Africa. Ed, you mentioned Botswana, South Africa, and what? Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay. I, I just wanted to add something. Like uh, I heard that some of the girls were sad, obviously, because they didn't place any in any of the fast tracks. And Carolina was kind of like cheering them up, you know, telling them about her own position and how she only plays in one fast track, and she ended up winning the crown. But the thing is that Carolina's case is on parallel because her final was three months after the original. So when the girls re-arrived in Puerto Rico, the fast tracks were no longer uh, into the equation. They just judge the girls on anything else. So in here, if you have been following this world for 20 years and you haven't placed in any fast track at all, chances are you're, you know, Mm-hmm. So I wanted to have that. Maybe top 40, but top 12. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, probably. And I think that's how uh, we can actually agree on our choices because we have seen how these girls had been doing throughout this month. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. South Africa has placed in everything also. So, yeah, mm-hmm. in, in Africa, it's very competitive, but Botswana reigns queen of Africa right now. Yeah, oh, yeah for sure. Okay. Without doubt. Definitely without doubt. All right. Who's next? That's it, right? That's it for Africa. Yeah. All right. Asia. That's oh, that's no. its strongest. I'll start. Too many options. I'll start. <laughs> this is this is to me is the most contentious yes. uh, continent for me because yeah. 
I keep changing my the positions, the rankings. Like in the very beginning, even before 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 the girls arrived in India, my top Asian girl was Lebanon. Um because you know, I fell in love with her, you know, when she, when she competed in Miss Universe, and then I followed her journey to Miss World. So I, she definitely has to be one of the favorites of Miss World. But then again, she comes to India after like a, a couple of weeks. Her, I feel that her energy level has sort of like gone down a bit, and uh, other countries like Turkey or even Indonesia mm -hmm. have sort of like you know taken over her. So to speak, but I still love Lebanon. But for me, for now, for me, the the number one in Asia for me is Turkey, based on the reasons that I stated earlier, and then Lebanon, and then I was teetering between India and Indonesia. But after I saw Indonesia's talent performance, I picked Indonesia over India. And uh, remember, I thought India could take it all this year because India has sent a very competitive, strong candidate but i don't know what do you think of india a hometown girl i think she will be in top 12 but nothing else that's that's what i think too she will be top 12 mm -hmm. yeah okay so those are my top choices number one turkey two lebanon indonesia asia next mine uh, will be turkey first indonesia second and india third Good, 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 good. Okay, so for me, number one will be Indonesia. I love Miss Indonesia. I think she's so sweet. I love her. Number two is Turkey. I love Miss Turkey. She's so elegant. Uh, number third is India, who is the host country. Very close by, just to let you know, Nepal and Lebanon. Very close, very close. Yeah. Hmm. All right. George. So... Uh, my favorite from Asia is Turkey. Uh, for me, she just reminds me of, like a Disney princess. Yes. Um, you know, if they make a second movie like Aladdin, I think she should be like Princess Jasmine. She just has mm -hmm. characteristics, qualities, and I think she will make a great Miss World. Um, second one, I have India. And not because she's a host country, it's because I think she's actually a really strong contestant and she's really well-spoken. That's one quality I absolutely love about the Indian beauty queens is if you give them a microphone, they will not disappoint. And she did a fabulous job in the public speaking abilities. Uh, and the last one from Asia I have is uh, because of Beauty the Purpose. I think she just has such a great uh, project. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Which one? Oh, the last one I had is uh, Nepal. Nepal. Oh, yeah. I had like I was kind of in, in between Indonesia and Nepal, but I think I'll go with Nepal. This one. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. All right. Who's next? Slenka. Yeah, so I agree. I have Turkey in the first place. I mean, she's absolutely stunning. She is excelling in everything. And when they were presenting the Beauty with a Purpose project, when she was on the stage after talking, her facial feature, I was looking at her and I was like, this is a possible Miss World. Like, she gave me that, like, okay, I can imagine her being an amazing Miss World. Then I love Lebanon. I mean, also because uh, she is amazing. I'm, I love her since Miss Universe. She She's an excellent girl. And then she has a lot of great qualities. But also, I'm not going to lie, guys. You know, she is, uh, her mom is a Palestinian descent. So my heart kind of goes in there too. And I would love for her to be in top to have the chance to talk maybe a little bit about what is her family going through. And then I love, Indonesia because she is really she's incredible when she's talking about the book she created like she got my heart and I love Indonesian I love Indonesian people so it would be great but of course Nepal and India are like the black horses like Asia is just excellent this year very strong yeah. that's why that's why in a way I you know I don't like this continental queen thingy you know because because you know it, it eliminates all the other girls that could be just as best you know, as mm -hmm. the, as the favorites. So, but you know what? Yeah. That's Julius making. You know, so we have yeah. to respect it. All right, who's next? Ed. Um, Asia. The thing about Turkey, Turkey is without a doubt for me personally, the prettiest girl there. Like from the one hundred and twelve, if I had to crown a Miss World based on beauty, it's, it would be Turkey. But um. I don't know. I, I always keep thinking, like, who am I fooling that India is not going to be in the top four? So 
right now, for a long time, I had India as the top of Asia, but Asia for me is the strongest. So I have like five girls fighting for the spot. I have Turkey. I have Lebanon because I'm in love with Lebanon. Yeah. But you have to choose between Turkey and Lebanon. You have yeah. to choose mm. between India yeah. and Indonesia. Yeah. I know it's hard. Mm. And then you have yeah. to choose between Nepal and Philippines. But oh, those yeah. six, I'm, yeah. I'm positive that those six should be in the top 12, give or take one or two. I couldn't say at this point because I, I can see Turkey as a Miss World, but at the same time, can she beat India in this spot? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or Indonesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I want to add, Rafa, I want to add that I think it's embarrassing and sad and preposterous that Lebanon did not make the finals in Miss Universe with that personality because yeah. she is everything that Miss Universe claims to look for, but they always been so anti-Arab. I mean, from uh -huh. history that I have to say it. I mean, yeah, that's another if, reason if I you're Egypt, talk. if you're Iraq, if you're Egypt, if you're Lebanon, if you're even Malaysia in Miss Universe, you're doomed. You see, so I'm glad that she got the spot here to shine. And well, wait, I, Lebanon, sure Lebanon, Lebanon won Miss Universe in 1971, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't even born. Yeah, like, <laughs> wait. But it's, it's true. How they and Miss USA, night. Miss USA 2010, Rima Faki, Lebanese born. And how did she do in Miss Universe? How did she do? Well, she 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 Not screwed first. up because uh, uh, she thought she didn't screw up. She wasn't placed because she was yeah. Lebanese. That's but there was it. only top. There was only top ten. Okay, if it had been top fifteen, maybe. Not top fifteen. Maybe, maybe she was number fifteen. Maybe she was number eleven. Who knows? There was top. There was a top fifteen. Yeah. Top sixteen, I think, actually. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and what do you have to uh, All right. So who's next? Now, new continent. New continent. Okay. The it's Americas. Fun. Now, the Americas, they combine the Americas and the Caribbean. As you know, this year, there were less Caribbean countries participating. So that's why they figured they, they could combine uh, two regions in one. So I don't know if that's a good idea. But, you know, I mean, do you think it's a good idea? I mean, how many... No. They're like what? Well, over 13 Caribbean countries. Hold on, I move this away. Yeah. Well, They're like five, six only. Yeah. What? But it's still, Europe has the most girls, I think, right? Most, Europe has the most girls? Yeah. yeah. Europe, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, for the Americas, my number one is and Enrique, you're gonna like me. Brazil. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> she's been kind of like she's like very low-key, I think, during the entire competition. She's very low-key, but we all know that you know she has an amazing uh you know beauty with a purpose project uh she went to the vatican to see the pope yes. and uh so she and the pope are like buddy buddies now they're best friends and who doesn't like that you know if you once you see the pope that's it you you're, you're going to heaven okay mm -hmm. uh so yeah so we all love brazil uh, followed by one of the most beautiful faces trinidad and tobago Okay. And I didn't care about her beauty with a purpose. I just thought this girl, she has a be beautiful face. For me, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then she just jumped off my list, Peru. I had Martinique as my number three, but after having seen Peru and saw her videos and her performance, I thought, you know what? She deserves to be in the top three for the Americas. So those are my top three. Brazil, Trinidad and Tobago, and Peru. Who's next? Me. All right. Well, for, me, for me, the best in Americas is uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad she's and a, Tobago. Yeah, okay. she's a, for me, she's the first place in America. Second place, Brazil. And the third place is USA, but Peru is very close. Why did, then you, in why did you pick USA? I'm just curious. Because she's a good speaker. I love when she spoke in the in the head to head challenge, and um, I think she's very smart and and she's sweet and I like her. So I I I think that she should be in the top twelve. Okay. Let's see. good. George. Yeah. Okay, so I'm kind of repeating myself because I feel like today me and Rafa are like on the same zone for some reason. 
um, which doesn't really happen often. That's so right, my favorite right? in America is uh, Trinidad and Tobago, um, Ache, right? She is so beautiful, so stunning. And one thing I really like about this island is even though it's super tiny, they always send like diverse contestants, uh, especially Ache. I think she could be, she can pass for anything, Asian, African, uh, you know, mixed race. Like she has such a diverse look and I absolutely love that. Um, and also you may not really like her beauty the purpose, but I actually really liked it because it was so personal to her. She talked about mental health and depression that she had you know depression that she had to go through for like two three years and um, after she found faith um, in the, her religion she managed to kind of overcome that and it helped her to uh, overcome the mental health and I think that was actually quite touching I actually quite, quite, quite liked it um, so yeah Trinidad and Tobago for me uh, she would be in top for sure the highest one in America's uh, Peru I think Peru is really beautiful um, I usually have a soft spot for Peru. I don't know why. Like I've, I've noticed in my leaderboard, I always have Peru in my like, top five for some reason. But she just, and I watched the video. I watched the introduction video and she is so charming. She could be like a television presenter. She, yeah. The way she was promoting her country. I, I want to visit Peru one day because it was so captivating. She showed the natural beauty and like even the tribes of Peru. And it was really exciting. Um, so yeah, You're for welcome. people to do You're, video for next. She'll be welcome here. Oh, thank you. you, um, you can and yeah, is so sweet. Um, and the last one I have is Brazil. Um, I think she's 20, right? She's one of the youngest contestants. She's one of the youngest, yes. But she seems so mature beyond her years. And yeah, of course, meeting Pope is incredible. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. But except that I think her project was also quite nice because she's the first ever uh, woman from Amazona, Amazonian, Amazonian. Uh, to win the Miss Brazil uh, pageant in the six years of the pageant, which I think is quite incredible. So I think she's making a mark for her country. So those would be my top three from Americas. Trinidad, Tobago, Peru, and Brazil. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know what? If uh, if TNT does not win the show, she needs, she needs to compete for Miss Universe. Yes. I mean, she will do very well in Miss Universe. So. All right, who's next? Thank you, darling. So we all have the top three same, I say. I really love Brazil for the same reason. And even the fact that we talked to Enrica and he said that when she won, right, she didn't even speak English. And she learned to speak fluent English in such a fast time. That's an amazing, incredible achievement. I love her project because, you know what, I feel like everybody's focusing on kids around the world, you know, stuff. But, like, have you ever seen someone focusing on their charity project on, like, a disease, like a Hansen's disease, which is a leprosy, if I'm not wrong, right? Yes. That's oh, something. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That it's, is it's just called, so... It's, it's called Hansen's disease. Hansen's, yes, Yeah, correct. Hansen's disease, yeah. And he, like, she is right. She talks about the fact that these people are so excluded from the society, you know, like uh, we are all afraid of them. And it's just incredible that she goes and like, she talks to the people who really like suffer from the disease and she's not scared and she's showing to the world that it's okay. It's really touching. Um, obviously, I really love Serena and Tobago too, like everyone. One of the things that I really like love, did you see when they had the Save the Tiger? campaign that she actually made her own poem about the tiger that was oh, no, so adorable I, I i love her she she has yeah. the beard but she has the heart like i look at her and i connect with her and i just yeah, yeah she has my heart and then peru of course again but i have a feeling that peru is gonna meet the fate of shanice you know she's probably not gonna go that high to miss world because this kind of a beauty for some reason at miss world never does that great but then they go to Miss Universe and they slay. So I can see Peru to be the next Miss Universe. Yes. Right. yes. Good point. Who's next? I can go. I can go next. So okay. I I have the same than you guys. Like the order is a little bit different. I have first a uh, Trinidad and Tobago. She's gorgeous. The face and as you say, Rafa, when she was speaking, I don't recall her project because I was just like, wow, what a beautiful girl. Uh, second for the Americas is Brazil. She has a beautiful project and she's actually beautiful. You know, I, like when I was looking at the, you know, she has a nice story and I was looking at her pictures, video. She's very elegant and she's only 20 years old. So good for her. And my third is Peru. Uh, George, as you say, like when she, I saw her video, she's so sweet. And she yes. has, she reminds me, you know, of who guys of Miss El Salvador 2017, the one who was top 15 Miss. Yeah, yeah. Who tried oh, yeah. to go to be the host for the last Miss Universe pageant, but. She, she plays second, she reminds me of her a lot. So uh, with you guys, I really think that she may win Miss Universe maybe in a couple of years. Number four, just to let you know how you say, 
And number five, I think that Canada, my country, sent the most beautiful girl in a long time. She has one of the most beautiful faces. Uh, yeah, that's my top for the Americans. I just want to ask, um, who sent? Who's the national director of Miss Peru? Is it Jessica Newton? Tito Paz. No, Tito Paz. Oh, Tito Paz. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Do you think uh, Jessica Newton should take over? No. 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 Not for work. Not for work. No. No. Not never. for world. No. Okay. Just no, because it doesn't it doesn't align with with her with her company. Yeah. No. Not all. All right, mm -hmm. so Tito Paz can keep it. All Ed right, who's next? Ed, you're next. Um, now that Lenka was mentioning about Peru, which I agree, I can see her winning any Grand Slam, but Miss World. Yeah. For a reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. She reminds me of Alejandra Conde. Yes. Like so thing. beautiful, so well prepared, but yet a little bit too much hyperactive for Julia, I guess. I don't know. Okay. I, I like Peru, but in my case, she would have to beat Trinidad and Tobago and Brazil for that spot in order to win. Um, I think uh, in this case, you have to put like you have to put on the numbers if you want to work. If you want to be Miss World, you have to adapt yourself to the style of the pageant. Yeah. Like if you want to be Miss Grand, oh, like you mm -hmm. need to want to sell uh, fish sauce and be humiliated. If you want to uh, work for an erotic egomaniac, you join Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. You see? So if you want to be confused the rest of your life, you me you join me supernatural. So um okay. this is the thing. I I, I think with Peru, she's very well prepared. I still have a little bit of um picturing her as Miss World. It, it would not be surprising, but I think that if she doesn't win this, she would win anything else she she takes part into. So my favorite Trinidad and Tobago, obviously. She's kind of like, she embodies a perfect news world. She reminds me of Giselle Laron when she was young. And I think Brazil has surprised everybody. She's regal. She's elegant. She had an amazing project. She's a good speaker. And Peru, I, I have a tie between Peru and Dominican Republic. Because Dominican Republic is just simply turkey-like stunning. So I think that based on that, she should be in the top 12 as well. But I don't know what's going to happen. All right. So what do you think of your own girl, Panama? If I was allowed to vote for her, she would be my winner, of course. I'm going to mention her as first, like in Panama. But then, you know, I have to look at this with an objective perspective. Because I've been a supporter for my girl from day one, but I also can recognize how this is going to roll out. You see? And... Everything that's happening makes us uh, be better for the next edition. Like like you said at the beginning, the Miss World format changes every year. We didn't know that this year everything was going to be continental. We didn't know that the top model mm -hmm. was going to be continental. The head-to-head, -head, the way they handled it, uh, that helped us like prepare for the next edition even stronger. Unless they yeah. change everything again. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're done, right? With this continent? No. America. Europe. Missing yeah. Europe. Go to Europe. Mm -hmm. go to Europe. Oh, Europe. Okay. Europe. Europe. Okay, I'll go first. Ma okay, again, like um, like Asia, everything like changed, you know, every as, as time goes by. So in the beginning, I had Czech Republic as my number one, only because it's just gorgeous, stunning, perfect. But then again, it dawned on me that this girl is so, so beautiful that it would be hard to focus on what she's saying. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think Julia would prefer somebody who is not as gorgeous as Czech Republic, but then again, people will be drawn to her, uh, you know, to her cause, to her project, because she's not like extremely gorgeous, okay? Like, you know, when I think of Stephanie Del Valle, Okay, when she won. I mean, she's not like gorgeous, gorgeous, but people listen to her. You know what I mean? Like with Carolina, I don't think a lot of people listen to Carolina because she's stunning, like a Barbie doll. You know, she's just gorgeous. Okay. So I don't think Czech, I don't think uh, Christina will be crowned this world because based alone on her gorgeousness, on her goddess beauty. Okay. She needs to go to Supernational. Okay. Gerhard, if you're watching the show, please urge. Christina to represent Czech Republic in this supernational, maybe Absolutely next year. Not. Next year, okay? 
and she's gonna win. She will win <laughs> for sure. So yeah, instead of Czech Republic, my number one is England, only because I think Julia loves England. She is uh she's very brainy. She's she's what she has a, she a science. She's a fashion model and she's also a science communicator. She's into air, air aerospace engineering, all this like really brainy yes. stuff. And you know, she's beautiful. People people will want to listen to what she's saying, I think. Okay, she's not very intimidating like Czech Republic is. So yeah, so England is, is, num is number one, followed by Czech Republic. And my third, I didn't like her in the beginning, but she, she, she started growing on me, is Spain. Close was Northern Ireland, but I, I prefer Spain okay. over Northern Ireland. So those are my, my top three. All right, who's next? Me. Julio, <laughs> go. Yes, well, I have to say that England was my winner until f a few days ago. And I feel that, uh, as you said, uh, Julia Morley would love her. And she has a lot of probabilities to be the new Miss World. But I was romantic in the, in the last few days. And I think that the most beautiful from Europe is Czech Republic. So Czech Republic for me is the first place. Then in second place, England. And my third place is Wales because she has an incredible- oh my God. Um, like, yeah, Wales is like, oh my, this still is very close. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And um, I have a Spain very close, but I think Wales, uh, we have to be in the top 12, let's see. Sorry, can I go after Julio, George? Sure, go, Antonio. Perfect. Why? Because I'm in shock. Julio, you and me, we have the same top for Europe. Number one, I have the <laughs> Republic. <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh, come on. That face, like, she's peak and, you know, ah, she's beautiful. Number two, I have England, that I think that Julia, at the beginning of the competition, she was thinking to crown England. But I think she was going, she has been going down. She didn't place in top models. She was not even in the top 10 for beauty with a purpose. So I don't think she will be for Europe. I think she, she was misplaced for the Republic. And third is Wales. As you say, Julio, she did very well. She speaks amazing. I love her face. She's very, very exotic. And I don't sure you remember she suffered an accident maybe like a year ago. Yeah, and Julia went to the hospital. It's a wonderful life story. To talk to her. And she speaks very well. So she's my number third for Europe. So... All right, George. All right. Uh, so my favorite from the Europe is, you know, a little bit biased, but uh, English Rose. I absolutely love Jessica. I think she just has all the qualities, characteristics to be the next Miss World. Uh, similar to what you guys said, I really want her to win, but I don't think she will win. Maybe she'll be top two. Like something tells me that she's not going to win. But I, I just love everything about her. Background is really intelligent. I think she's one of the best Miss England that they have sent because... The previous years, I feel like, you know, England kind of sent, like, average-looking girls who are okay, and they didn't really place that high, except I think 2017 was second round up with Stephanie. So um, I think she's, for me, um, the best from Europe, and I would love to see her wins. So please, if Julia is watching it, please crown a home girl. Uh, anyway, uh, except her England, I have Czech Republic. And the only reason I had Czech Republic in second place is she reminds me a little bit too much of Carolina. And I do not really see them crowning two blonde. Oh, back one. Back. Yeah. That's the only thing that is kind of holding me back. But she's beautiful. She has a big project. She, uh, like you guys said, she should definitely represent the Czech Republic again. Uh, maybe Supra would be good or even Grand International. I think Not will love her. She's a goddess. So in case, uh, MJ is a good option. And I have Northern Ireland. Um, and I think Northern Ireland will like crack into the top 12 because she has personality. If you haven't seen her videos, watch it. Like she cracks me up. She's so funny. Um, I think Julia will like her because she looks like someone who could be easy to work with. And like you said, you don't have to be the most physically stunning woman to win this role, but you need to be someone who's comfortable to work with like in different circumstances. And I think Northern Ireland has that. Like she seems like, she, you know, she will have a good laugh. So I like her. All right, yeah. good choices. Also Northern Ireland have very good talent as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Who's next? I'll go last, so Ed. <laughs> All right, Ed, you're next. Um, 
I actually had England in first place. I had my, my reservations because of her age. Because, England? you know, she's going to be, I believe she's 28. And um, if she yeah. should win, Miss World will be obliged to raise the age limit, something that they don't want mm. to do. Uh, the age limit is 26. So they accepted uh, all these contestants because of uh, the okay. delay. Yeah. So even though um, I see her like really complete, I don't know if they would crown either a winner or a continental queen who's 28 years old. But I still see her as the strongest in Europe. Uh, but like I said, if they crown her as one of the winners, they are going to have to raise the age. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's no way out of it. And uh, in second place, I have Spain because I see that she's, she's been strong before and during and still maybe she didn't deliver as strong as Botswana, for example, but I still think she has a, a chance to place. And in third place, I have Czech Republic. I love her, but for the same reasons you guys mentioned, uh, I don't know if it should be kind of a um, decisive thing that she's also a blonde. I mean, we've seen happen uh, before, like uh, all winners looking alike. But I think that I, I'm not. I I think it has more to do with being from the same culture than just being a blonde, because Czech Republic is just next door to Poland. Mm. But um, those those are my three, and then I have a couple of wild cards like Belgium, uh, Wales, and France in Europe, and Gibraltar as well. So this is also a strong group. Yeah, let's talk about France. Uh, is she on anybody's list? I and mean, she was, I think, France. Yes, she's yeah. a, she's my number. I think she's my number twenty two or twenty three. She's my fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I have not thirteenth. Okay. Rafa, I, I, I don't think that she knew what she was getting into when she no. agreed to come she to Miss World. She had two years to prepare for Miss World. Yeah, but she just wrote on her beauty. I mean, she's a good contestant. I mean, Miss Universe, she was amazing. But in here, she looks like a little bit lost. Like, like what is all this? Yeah. All is I can it? say is that I love her national costume, okay? Uh, it's the, uh, it's the Versailles, Versailles Palace. Is her costume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and from head to toe, yeah. to me, was the best uh, national costume ever. Fran the sure. French girls always deliver national costumes, I think. Yeah. Sure. All right, Lenka, darling, your choices for Europe, please. Well, obviously, I got to put Czech Republic in the first place, but it's not just because she's Czech, because at many universe, I really despite our Czech uh, contestants, sorry. Um, it's because, you know, actually, when she won, I wasn't a fan of hers because um, there was some... Um, story behind it i wasn't really sure but then i got to meet her in a person and she just blew my mind literally she came here to thailand we worked together and now we're still working together and every day she just shocks me she's incredible the only thing is i know people complain that she's very soft-spoken right when you go to a uh, head to head that she doesn't have the power in her voice but you know she's just a very soft-spoken person but her charity work is incredible she's really been doing it for years um she's a great person and and she's stunning and you know i know you guys say that she looks like carolina and we're a neighboring country but let me also remind you that 1997 1999 and 2000 was all won by india <laughs> so anything is possible in this world but i hear your concerns i mean there's a lot of great girls but also as you guys said about supranational i know two years ago she went to supranational to support christina malijova and gerhard absolutely loved her I think he even said if she was the one competing that she would have won that year. And I know that Andre sent an email to Miss Czech organization that he doesn't wish for a winner to be picked in May because normally Miss Czech Republic happens in May. So it's one month before Miss Supernatural. He wants a representative who is actually picked months before. So she has a time to actually promote the Miss Supernatural brand. So mm -hmm. I think there is a high possibility that one of the girls who already has some title will be nominated for supranational so i wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't win miss world that she would be nominated right away for supranational all right second place i actually guess love belgium i know like she didn't do that well in so many like fast okay. tracks but she has undeniable beauty and sweet personality i could see her as a potential winner 
And I put England in a third place, but I gotta say that girl, I don't know what is it about her. When she talks, it's kind of feeling like she, um, a little bit like above all, like it kind of rubs me a little bit in the wrong way. I mean, I heard it from someone from Global Beauties, right? That she wasn't really that friendly. And also it's her age, which I think that Miss World Organization has a problem with. And normally, because when you look at all the past winners and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see her as a winner. I see her as a very high top contender. All right. Good choices. All right. We're done, right? Oh, yeah. uh, I just want to double check. When Mex uh, Mexico won the Miss World pageant, Vanessa, how old was she? Was she 26 or 28? Because if I'm not wrong, she I was think she was 26. Holy 26. 26, yes. 26. Yeah, I just want to double check. So is she like the oldest Miss World so far? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I'm yes. saying I don't have a problem with her age. I think the organization. Now okay. the winner, Rafa. Who? Now we have to say who's our winner. Okay. All right. Is the audience ready? Get that one. Da, 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 da. No, wait a minute. Top two. Don't we want to have the top two? I mean, just see first runner up on the winner, and then we can <laughs> wrap <Okay>. it up. <laughs> All right. So, who wants to start with the first runner up? <laughs> this is so hard. This is wanna? So difficult. Okay. Yeah. All I right. can. I can go. I can go. You want top four? I will tell you my results. All right, please, Antonio. Yeah, because I, I can't. very quickly number four, Indonesia. I think that she's the queen of Asia. I think that she's lovely. She's going to be four. Number third is going to be Botswana. I love Miss Botswana. She's my number third. Uh, love her, love her, love her. Number two is going to be Czech Republic for me. Beautiful blonde girl. I love her so much. And I think that why Czech Republic is not going to win? Because she looks like Carolina. So my Miss War is Miss Trinidad and Tobago. Beautiful girl. Love her, love her, love her. And I heard that Miss World 1986 is already in India, if I'm not grown. So they asked to invite her. So maybe that's a sign. A sign. So that's, yeah, she's my winner. Thank you. <laughs> All uh, right. Good choices. All right. Who's next? I'll, I'll go then. Me. All right. Go, Julio. Okay. You go. <laughs> okay. My fourth place is Botswana. In the third place, Turkey. Second, Trinidad and Tobago. And my winner is Czech Republic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love it. Next? Okay, Turn. so in reverse order, I have the fourth princess. I have Botswana. Um, my third princess is uh, Trinidad and Tobago. My runner-up is England. And my winner is Turkey. Okay. Yes, I think the last day will be for me. I think she will be the Miss World. Uh, it's been a while since Turkey won, right? Uh, Two thousand and two was the last time. So, right, I'm, I'm going to go next. Okay. Uh, all right. So the fourth, I shall announce the results in reverse order. Uh, <laughs> fourth place is Miss England. <laughs> Third place is Botswana. Mm. Second place is. Czech Republic, <laughs> Miss World 2023 slash 2024, Miss Turkey. <laughs> Nick will be very happy that I picked his girl, Turkey, as Miss World. There's nothing I don't like about Narsina Say, okay? Say her name, say her name, Narsina Say. <laughs> All right, who's next? Ed. 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 <laughs> Am I the last one? Everybody went? No. No, uh, we no. have Lenka still. Yes. Oh, yeah, but, okay. Um, so top four, obviously, one per continent. Uh, I have Botswana as first runner-up. Um, I haven't decided. Well, for Europe, I would, I would say I would go on a roll and I would say uh, Czech Republic. And uh, for Asia, 
that's it. That is where I, I lose it because I want to say Turkey, but there's India on the way. So <laughs> that I cannot make a decision on that. But I would say India makes more sense. And my Miss World is Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, so I like Ashe before the pageant started. Uh, when she arrived, I think there was something amiss, like something that did wasn't screaming queen or winner. But then these last few days, she looks amazing. And one thing, we have not seen all these girls completely made up yet. Like they have been looking nice in all the events, but we haven't seen them in full hair and makeup mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. That's true. So that's going to be decisive as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. Like me. All right. So, thanks, the, so the four names I have, I feel like any of them can take the crown. I feel like it's just going to be that last moment that the interviews, the Q&A and so on, who is going to really do the best job, although it didn't really matter last time. But I'd say that for me, uh, I love Botswana so much and she is ruling everything, but I just don't feel feel like she has the exact look of Miss World, so I put her in a fourth place. But if she wins, I will be very happy to be she's, she's incredible. In a third place, I have Trinidad and Tobago, but I love her too. But my top two are Turkey and Czech, obviously. And I have to go with Czech Republic because, you know, she got my heart. But I know I'm biased, but I absolutely adore her and love her. But Turkey is stunning too, so I am happy with either of them winning. All right. All right. I, I, mean, you know, I think all... that any of the, of those four will be a perfect Miss World. Yeah, we all agree. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Agree. yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about possible big surprises. Anybody who's not or who who we, we paid little attention to all of a sudden makes the top 12. Any mm -hmm. sort of potential surprises? Mexico. Lesotho. <laughs> No, I you USA think... or Nepal, I will assume. Yeah. Nepal. Yeah. Nepal. Yeah, but we talk about yeah. them. I mean, they, there was yeah, a little did. group of girls that are obviously in, like Philippines, Nepal, and USA, oh, like, uh, Dominican Republic. Um, uh -huh. Totally surprised. Uh, Julio said Mexico. Yeah, you, you know, know what? I'm are... still I'm still hoping for Colombia to Colombia, be. exactly. Yeah. Colombia maybe yeah. a surprise. I'm still Mexico, hoping for she, she will be in the 40 for sure. But, you know, Mexican girls are usually champions at all the fast tracks. I don't know what happened this year. And she she's a former Demis Globe, you know, she won an oh, international yeah, tag. Right. Yeah. And that's she right. came here. And... Yeah. True. What well, about I want Panama? Panama? Yeah. I wish. Nobody um, mentioned nobody mentioned Jamaica because usually Jamaican girls um have it. Do very well in this world. I mean, if they had their own really region, if they had their own region, I think she would have a chance. But only with six girls in the Caribbean or seven, mm -hmm. I think it's a given. Like Trinidad and, and, and Dominican Republic, Puerto, 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 Puerto Rico. Let's talk about Puerto Rico's gonna place. She should place. She's she a, she's play. lovely mm -hmm. girl, and yep. all the girls love her. Elena Rivera is her name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which oh. which which girl which girl should not be competing in this world? What should do you mean? <laughs> Which girl should be in India? <laughs> well, for age, maybe Miss Bulgaria. She's 16 years old, so too young. I agree oh God, yeah. totally. Bulgaria should not be competing. Well, then again, there. she's within the age limits. She's allowed. Okay. But of course, her Plus, parents her parents bought the crown for her. Okay. We know. Yeah, that. didn't they cut the original winner in Bulgaria? I saw the interview with Natalie Glebova. It was pretty it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. Her name is Christiana Yordonova, and she's like 24, 25. And she was she was crowned in December 2022 until her national director uh you know pulled a rug underneath her and then replaced yeah. her with a 16-year-old. So, you know, it just, just wanna say if she is watching Christiana, you know, I'm really sorry this happened to you, and I'm hoping that you're gonna continue to another page and, and rock the stage because you deserve it. It's horrible what happened to you, and I just wish that you're not gonna give up and continue. I think I think she will probably consider competing in Miss World Canada again. Hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully she'll place. Oh, let's talk about Thailand. 
Tarina Bodes. She's my She's 21. My 40. <laughs> She's your number 21? <laughs> She's number 21, yeah. George, what do you think of Thailand? You're Thai. Um, I feel like Tarina is not the best candidate for Miss World Pageant. I think she would do a lot better for maybe Miss Supernational, um, even Miss Grand. I know that she joined Miss Grand Thailand, I think, in 2019, representing Phuket. Where she, yeah, she was in top 12, I think. Like she was in semi-finalists. Uh, but I don't think she's the right candidate for Miss World because uh, personally, like she's not the type of beauty that is suited for Miss World. She's a bit too fierce. Okay. Personally. Um, so that's why she's in my top 20, but I don't think Thailand will make it further than, like, yeah. She's yeah. not going to make it. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Okay. I agree. I, I, obviously, you know, I live in Thailand, so I follow Tanya for quite a while. And... The thing is, she is beautiful and she has a nice personality. When she was competing for Miss World Thailand, I was rooting for her because that girl was competing at so many pages from Grand to Miss South Africa, right? To go into Miss Universe Thailand a couple of yeah. times. So I kind of feel for her. She keeps on trying and fighting and so on. So I really wanted for her to finally make it on the international level. But I feel like, you know, we all know that she had some, uh, you know, upgrades to her face. She looks great. But I just feel like, you know, Miss World Organization is not really keen on that kind of a thing, that they prefer the natural beauty. So I would prefer, I mean, she definitely, she should go Miss Supranational. I think she would do a fantastic yeah. job in Supranational. And I love her. I love her. I just think that she's not the right type for this Miss World. Exactly. Okay. One girl that who is not on our list is Venezuela, because usually Venezuela sends strong girls. But uh, Venezuela this year, she has like, what, two years to prepare, more than two years to prepare. Yeah. But why is she not making any impact? Any, any hey, analysis? He's, he's in George's list. For Julio, say it. I'm Ms. sorry, Venezuela is in George's list. <laughs> but she's in my yes. 50 place. Yeah. Number 50? Oh my god, you're cruel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's cruel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't even have I, I, I wouldn't yeah. know uh, Rafa. Uh I think that they, they complain that Julia hates Venezuelans, and my personal belief is that they are sending the wrong profile. Always, always. Yes. Um for example, if Amanda Dudamel was in Miss World, she would what? win hands Pro down. Exactly. And they need a girl with charisma. Yeah. And for example, they claim that Alejandra was robbed. And Alejandra would have been a much better fit for Miss Universe since it was that year in Miami and she looks like a Telemundo presenter. Yeah. So um I my my personal thing with Venezuela is that they are sending girls who are not really the Miss World fit. Because you know, it's all about the fast tracks. It's all about and and Ariadne. She's beautiful. I find her beautiful, stunning. She is very well prepared. She dresses impeccably. Her makeup is always on point. Uh, but I think that that's as far as her preparation went. I think, you know, they didn't prepare her properly in what is a head to head or the project or the other things that are really important, which is not only happens in Venezuela but in most Latin countries who fail to grasp the concept because even. Me as a director, I failed to grasp the concept properly year after year. So it's it has a lot to do with your culture as well, because girls, for example, in Europe uh, or even in Asia, since most of them are mixed with, you know, European ancestry, uh, they have a different take on social work and how they project themselves in communication, which is a little bit uh, difficult for the Latino girls that this year they have not been doing as well. Mm. And the problem I have with to say, Venezuela... I don't know, I just... I, I can't even pronounce Venezuela's name. That's the reason. That's one thing that turned Ariane. me off. It's her name. Ariane. I can't pronounce it. Ariane? I don't even know the name. De Boin. De Boin. De Boin. Ariane. It's weird. It sounds weird for an American. Ariane de Boin. Ariane. Oh, that's your, your opinion. <laughs> I think Thank that Venezuela, uh, uh, Venezuela had almost three years since she was crowned to go to Miss World. So I don't know why she didn't prepare herself in English, for example. She doesn't ah. speak English. Oh, she doesn't speak English? Oh. Okay. That's, that's not actually about today, Yeah, no. Okay, that's, that's too bad. 
Yeah, see, uh, like, I actually didn't even know her name. So that says it all. Like, her presence at Miss World, it's so quiet that I, you know, because there's 112 girls. I cannot know a name of all the girls. Yeah. So if I don't even know the name, that kind of says it all. Mm -hmm. That's true. Maybe if the girls were wearing a traditional sash with their names of their countries, maybe she would have mm -hmm. stand out. But the fact that they were wearing the stupid little pins that hardly anybody yeah. could read, you know, I mean, they need to get rid of that. They need to go back to wearing the sashes and stuff, you know. Yeah. So, good. I agree. Totally. Uh, I think we're done, right? All right. Yeah, people are saying Venezuela doesn't speak English. They keep, yeah, Venezuela keeps sending weak contestants. All right. Yeah. Well, who is the director of Miss World Venezuela? Is it, uh, is it, is it Gabriela Isler? Yes, Gabriela Isler and Nina uh, Cecilia. Nina Cecilia, okay. All right, so they need to change that. They need to send stronger Venezuelan girls next year, okay? All right, I think we're done. Did we miss anything? Did All we? Right. No, I don't think so. We have to do That's another good. one to, <laughs> to talk what? about the results. <laughs> yeah. result? A question, question for all of you. Have you heard where and when is going to be the next edition from his work? Um, What's one, isn't actually, it? Actually, it's it's supposed wow. to be this year. Because it's supposed to be this year. Uh, year. At the end of the year. At the end of the year. Yeah, after, after they confirm us that it was 2024, then they kind of like laid back. And the plan is to do it by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. okay. But we have not been gotten confirmation yet. So like, uh, for example, I already have my delegate for 2024. So we will yeah. have to, you know, jump yeah. start with everything. Too. Check has to. We Maybe all, I think going all to the be, countries yeah. have one. Yeah, ACOR has two one. Canada has has one. Yeah. yeah. Canada has not won. I, Canada was like first runner up, but twice. Yeah, just twice. But just to let you know, I have high hopes for the next Miss Canada because she's actually the first, she's indigenous, you know, from Canada. Oh, wow. And okay. she's gorgeous. Like She's indigenous and wow, she's amazing. Yeah, beautiful. Inclusion. Yeah, no, but she's actually beautiful. I mean, beautiful, extremely beautiful. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Another country that hasn't won Miss World is New Zealand. New Zealand was a former British colony and hasn't won uh, Miss World. Mm -hmm. What do we... Oh, we, I, I forget Australia. I thought Australia is very cute. Australia is going to be in the top 40 for sure. In the top 40. Yeah, yeah. She's in my top she 40. Was, yeah. She was picked for the tiger trip, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were six contestants for that, that tiger trip. I think she's one of them. Somebody's saying Paula Shugart is one of the judges. <laughs> I <knew> that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, oh, did I, the name did I tell you? Paula Shugart, speaking of Paula Shugart, she actually texted me like last week say? asking for my phone number because she wanted, she saw my video and she wanted to, uh, say something she wanted to correct me of some sort so, so i gave her my cell phone number but she hasn't called back so what's up mm. paula if you're watching please call me asap so we can talk girlfriend all right so, let's, let's see if she's not suing you <laughs> well uh why would she sue me <laughs> why would she sue me? <laughs> i don't get it like angel I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually defending her I, I defended her in, in, in basically most of my posts. You know, oh, I think who should sue me? Sue um, Kun Ann should be suing me, right? But she can't afford it because she's bankrupt. She is business <laughs> suing everyone else. Yeah. Did she, did she promise that. she's gonna sue everyone talking crap about her? So I think she's gonna be too busy suing everyone else, Rafa. You're on a list, though. Don't worry. Yeah, like you were on like <laughs> name number one hundred ten. <laughs> No, I mean everybody. Everybody loves to sue, but you know, as you know, I told you guys. So Lay Layla Rose, the new owner of Miss USA, mm -hmm. she and I are now buddy buddies. We're like close best friends. So hopefully, I should be able to attend Miss USA in August in Hollywood, and okay. maybe do a coverage, be a, a, a media partner of Miss USA. So we'll see. So nice. cross crossing our fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then October, you come to visit me in Thailand. That's oh, right. Maybe. Do you wanna do you wanna tell the world about our plans? For the next what? Year? Do you wanna tell everybody about our plan 
for next year? Oh, that plan. I meant in October that all of you are invited to my house to join oh, Miss Grant. Oh, for Miss Grant. That, that is not going to come. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, if it's happening in Thailand, you are all invited. I have a big house, so it's going to be a big global beauty party. But yeah, next year, I mean, I am considering, I mean, considering, I'm very, very interested. Yeah, I want to definitely represent Czech Republic at Universal Woman because my current title i have a discrepancies with my organization and i would love <laughs> to add a new title to my name <laughs> sorry no but i really love the organization i really like the fact you know there's an inclusion of like higher ages 25 to 45 i love what they stand for i have been watching the past year which was the first edition this edition is going to be happening in Cambodia, so I'm planning to visit, and hopefully next year I could be representing Czech Republic at there. So wow, I didn't know that. Yes, so we're we're hoping that uh, Lenka will represent the Czech Republic in the next edition of Universal Woman 2025 pageant. Okay, which will take place hopefully in Cambodia again next year. You know, we, we don't know. That'll be great because it's right close to me. Yeah. Save the money. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the next edition is this month in March, correct? I believe it's on twenty fifth. March twenty fifth, yes. So, mm -hmm. who do you think? Who do you think will win? Any any favorites for Universal Woman? I haven't seen the girls. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen them either. So, I really don't know. I actually do like Cambodia. I well, the thing is because I have a lot of friends in Cambodia. Uh, ever since last year and I was when I went there for the Miss Grand Cambodia I was really like my heart like the people in Cambodia are amazing I got so much love and so much support and I still have friends there and they were telling me about uh, Miss Cambodia that she's absolutely excellent so I have her my eyes on her definitely but I have to study the other contestants for sure I'm coming to watch for next year yeah <laughs> so yeah actually before Miss Universe adopted the inclusion uh, mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. universal woman actually was the first pageant yeah. to incorporate inclusion okay yeah. of this age wise yeah. no height requirement no weight requirement uh i mean fine age is still you still have to be like between 25 and 44 45 but i think eventually that will change in time mm -hmm. but yeah universal woman is the first and they're they have a great uh program they a, a great yeah. platform so yeah so yeah. there's hope there's hope for uh mature woman to compete on international stage again. Woohoo! Yeah! Yo, Lenka! <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it is really great because let's face it, when I was the age for Miss Universe and Miss World, uh, the, the organization in my country sucked. There was no preparation or anything. So when I like was offered to join in, I said, I'm not going to waste my time because I know that they would not help me to prepare or anything. I, I chose to model. And now I look at Miss Czech Republic. Hi, Tatiana. I love them. They are doing an amazing job. Every each girl they send out to the world is an excellent girl. I mean, yes. I mean, you That's see it. Girl. Like we got yeah. really great girls now. Tatiana is killing the game. Tatiana and Sam. So I wish they existed when I was that age, you know, but I'm missing the patients. So I really would love to join and yes. present my, you know, my cause, my my charity cause in our international stage because that's my re real reasoning. And it's not just a cliche. I really mean it, guys. And it's for animals, Rafa. Think of yourself as the winner already. Visualize <laughs> yourself as the winner. It's very important. Manifestation, yes. Manifestation is all in the mind. Okay, read, reading some of the comments. Yes, Brian Javier, our friend says, Universal Woman is a promising pageant. Yes. Danny Walker was supposed to go to India uh, to cover the pageant. Danny Walker, as you know, was a Miss former Miss Montana USA 2017. She has her own vlog. Love her. Uh, I love her too. Uh, and our good friend Luis Porteles, he's also in India uh, covering the pageant. And who else is in India? Of course, our good friends Enrique and Melvin Arana are in um, in India. They they both handle the social media accounts of Miss World. So good job, guys. Good job. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. It's getting, yep. it's getting late. We all need to go to bed. I Last to go to work. Uh, Ed. I wanted to add something because I remember that Puteri Indonesia is today. Mm. And they're crowning for winners. That's right. Like that's right. International, Forever. Supra Charm, and Cosmo. And I wanted to say because I worked with Mega when I was in Supranational. And they were, they were always very professional with us. 
I love Puteri, how they work, how they treat their delegates. And I respect them for not crawling back to Miss Universe about everything that happened with Poppy. Mm -hmm. They are doing their You're new edition. Forward. Yeah. They're crowning the winning for international and they are not getting involved into the drama of the neurotic and the broke. So I have an, a, a very... You respect. Uh, for Puteri, I wanted to add that. Because yes. it's, it's going to be yeah. interesting because all these girls are right yeah. now in, in Jakarta for the final. Yes, without yeah. doubt, Puteri Indonesia is one of the best national pageant organizations in the world. Like what said, said they're, they're very professional, they're very polite, they're very civil. And they train their girls very well. The girls, Indonesian girls coming out of Putri, Indonesia are amazing. They're amazing. Incredible. You know, but of Incredible. course, my favorite never wins. Hello. <laughs> when I pick my favorite, it, it ne they never win. So anyway, okay, well, uh, whatever. Yeah, Miss Universe made a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Because Putri, Indonesia is one of the best organizations in the whole wide world. So. Okay. Our good friend from India, Navid. Hi, Navid. Are you going to attend the uh, final show? In Mumbai, Navid, let me know. Um, uh, ben says, now Putri will allow the four girls to choose which pageant they want to compete. Is that true? The girls? No. no? Okay. Somebody what said, if they want all the same pageant? Yeah, I thought they're going to crown each girl specifically to go to a specific pageant. So now they, they will allow them to choose whatever pageant they want to go to. Now, I don't, I, I don't think that's a good idea, no. No, I don't think Maybe so. they will ask. About, I think it's a good idea if they ask the winner, "Hey, where do you want to go?" And then they can, the other, you know, go one by one. Okay. Yeah. Well, the but winner that's... gets dibs at everything first, but they are not misologists, so they don't know what are they getting into. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we know, but they don't. Good point. That's yeah. true. True. That's true. 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 Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, you know the uh the girls who won. Oh, well, the designers who won the world dress designs. Mm -hmm. I thought for me, USA's gown was like the bomb. USA's yeah. Indian inspired gown was the best. It was, it was designed by, uh, I forgot his name, some Lebanese guy. Oh, no, Venezuelan. Venezuelan. It was a Venezuelan guy Venezuelan. who designed Nidal, it. Nidal no I had. Nidal no I had, yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh, of Middle Eastern descent. But yeah, it was designed by a Venezuelan guy. One of the most beautiful gowns I've ever seen. When you look at the close-up, the details, the silhouette, the uh Very dissolved. Very dissolved. everything was everything was perfection. One of the best gowns I've seen. So yeah, that's all I have to say about the dress design, and they all deserve there to be. Uh, can um, I talk about the dress of the winners? Like I've noticed something. So I just wanted to ask you guys this question. What color evening gown do you think the winner is going to wear? Between pastel pink, pastel blue, and white. <laughs> Between these three colors, which color gown do you think a winner is going to wear this year? I think white. White? White. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you can see the background, right? They have like three colors, literally. <laughs> white. Is it white, blue, and pink? I think pink. she's going to be in hot pink. Or maybe red. <laughs> Lane, well, what, what, what color Miss Czech Republic? Uh, uh, Ms. Czech Republic so we got that? a problem because the designer is my dear friend from uh, GL Galak from Thailand. Uh, Christy was here uh, trying it, but he sent the gown to India and he wrote the name Miss World Czech Republic. So the customs in India are holding it, don't want to send it because they wanted to put the real name on a passport. So we still don't have the gown, you guys. I mean, oh, it's yeah. being dealt with, so fingers crossed that it's arrived. If not, then Tatiana, of course, brought a plan B, and it's beautiful too, but I just want to wear Gio Gala because, you know, combination of my favorite girl and my favorite designer will be the bomb. But since we're talking, I also would like to congratulate Sam Dolce on winning the best designer for Europe. Oh, yes. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Ben says Putri Indonesia will announce who's going to which pageant after a week. So they will mismatch and adjust the four girls to the four pageants, respectively. All right. Interesting. Speaking of the Miss World crown, do you think it should be replaced? No. 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 Okay. All right. I'm just asking. Hello. Don't be mad. <laughs> Gosh. That's like a long thing. We, like, By the way. <laughs> Did you it's notice that that the Supra is wearing the old crown now that she's in Indo Indonesia? She's oh, wearing did, the old supernatural crown. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah. I didn't yeah, notice that. that at all. 
She probably broke mm -hmm. the new one. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up. It's getting late. Yeah. Uh, to everyone who is watching, thank you so much for watching this show. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the instant notification for the next video. Please help my channel grow. Without my channel and other pageant bloggers out there, nobody will know what's happening in the pageant world. The good, the good elements and the bad elements of the pageant industry. People need to know. And please support all our work here. Please follow everybody on this group. Antonio's Instagram chat. Uh, Instagram is Tony Toriva at Instagram. Ed Dominguez is ed ed dom two two ed dom two two. And of course, Pageant Empress with George Lenka Dyrit. Is it still Dyrit? No, 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 no. Lenka Vomo Seal. <laughs> Lenka, Lenka Vomo Seal, V O M O C I L. And our good friend Julio Rodriguez Matute, as is on Instagram and also on Facebook. And of course, Critical Critical Beauty on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and. Um, and Actually, Antonio has a new Instagram page. Oh yeah, oh. I just created one. But but I is, it, is it the classic, the classic pageant? Yeah, yes, exactly. Like to see if that's the name I'm gonna take, but yeah, it's from All right. All right. Uh, Antonio has a new Instagram. It's classic, on pageants. Pa yeah, the classic pageant. Okay, good. All right, so uh, yeah, follow us all, please, and please supporting this channel, and don't forget to watch the finals of the seventy first Miss World to take place in Mumbai, India, on March 9th at seven thirty p.m. India time. Mumbai time. 9 p.m. Thailand. And it's going to be what? Uh, broadcast via Facebook, YouTube, I think. All social no, media platforms. Or, uh, or do you have to something? Or do you have to subscribe? Sony Live. Or do you have Sony to subscribe? Live. Oh, Sony maybe. Live? Okay. All right. And um, maybe you can access with a VPN because they're geo blocked. So if you're not in actually... India, you cannot watch the content. Oh, so well, I know yeah. that the Vietnamese channel we were watching Top Model at is already announcing that they're going to do broadcast too. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you, you always will find a way to watch it. Somebody is always carrying it. Okay. All right. Some uh, some fan will probably just hook up something Ill illegal. No, actually, no, <laughs> guys, I saw the instructions for the finale. It's first come, first serve when it comes to seats. So even though people have tickets, they have to show up early to have a nice seat. And it strongly says multiple times to do not record anything because they have sold the rights. So if um, anybody's going to be recording, they're going to get into deep trouble. So Copyright infringement. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Interesting. All right, people. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Rest of the week. We will see you on the next live. Hopefully to talk about the finals of the, the show. All right. Thank you, Julio. Thank you very much. Bye. I love you guys. Bye. Have a good day and have Bye. a good night. George, we'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. 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 Ciao.